So, it's probably an ad playing for most people right now. Um, and I'll, I'll explain what's going on in just a second. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to start up some Crypt of the Necrodancer. Um, and then we'll talk about APC they index mismatches. Too young. They told me I needed more training. Huh? I told them to drop dead. How ironic. I don't know how I survived that fall. You didn't. Something strange must have happened. My pulse is beating like a drum, but my blood is running cold. I'm not sure what's going on, but I came here with a question. And I'm gonna find the answer if it kills me. So, um, this camera occasionally gives me trouble. It probably needs a new driver. Not, not this one, this one's fine. But that one over there? It's a little... It's a little flaky. Um, and often, if it flakes out and I try to, like, restart it, OBS will crash. Right? That happens pretty frequently. It's, it's like a 40% chance or something. So, you know, I usually mention, hey, we might crash right now before I do it. Because if the stream goes down, I want people to know we're coming right back. And that nothing exploded and it's fine. Today, however... When I disabled and re-enabled that camera, blue screen of death, whole computer just, uh, which is bad. It's, it's it's quite bad. Um, I wrote the error code into chat like you do, because your hundred brains are much smarter than my one, and it looks like it's either a corrupted driver or. An NTFS problem, which is pretty bad, or uh, like a RAM error, right? Um, it did the same thing again the second time I tried to reset the camera. Which doesn't look good for the RAM being the problem, because restarting the computer should have fixed that. Uh, so I scheduled a check disk. We're not going to do it today, because... We got streams to stream, which is entirely responsible and good for the, the long-term health of my computer, I'm sure. Um, but we're going to do a check this the next time I restart my computer after the broadcast today. Um, and... The solution, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put solution in big old air quotes here. I unplugged the camera and plugged it into a different USB port. And it is now receiving live data, which is better than before. And we're just gonna cross our fingers and hope we can make it through a whole stream without exploding again. And we're gonna fix PC this evening. Yay, responsible adult. It's time for a I didn't wear a belt. Um, if my pants fall off in the middle of the stream, I will get banned from Twitch. So we're going to hope that doesn't happen. My slightly transparent pants. Look at them. You can like, see the wall through them. Delightful. Um, I think we're going to warm up in Zone 1 today because it's been a long time since I've danced. So we're going to do a quick Zone 1 and see if we can get warmed up and back into the groove. The next dance break, this stream, will be zone two for sure. Bad at skeletons, still.
Oh my gosh. Bad at bats, too. Oh, do you guys remember when I used to be slightly mediocre at this game and I could beat Zone 1? Do you remember that? Because that, that used to be a thing in the distant past. In the distant past. It did used to be a thing. Um, I wonder how, how crashed FTL is. I haven't loaded that back up yet. We'll see. We'll see. Um, it, is, it is not easy with the, uh, with the dance pad, Aubrey Angst. It's not easy. But um, I have passed the first floor before. Or like, you know, like zone one. Um, unfortunately, no, no dice this time. Um, it's, it's much, much easier with the keyboard, for sure. Alright, so here on Xenology. Alright, what were we doing? We just did the Distress Beacon. We were, oh, right, we were in the middle of listening to F FTL music while we do Microsoft Paint. I forgot to go back to that. I knew I was forgetting something. Because we, we had a mathematical musings um, purchased, and the, the topic is, wait, rocket scatter super unintuitive. Well, unless you have been trained in statistical intuition, then it's fine. Um, so we were, I lost my drawing because my computer crashed, but we'll make a new drawing. Woo. So this shape happens a lot. Um, basically, I'm going to go ahead and say most, and that's probably going to be wrong and someone will correct me, but most sort of really random things in nature take this shape. Um, and, and what I mean by that is if you plot the options for a thing on a horizontal line, like the height of a human being or the distance your rocket scatters from its target, in XCOM, if if you put, you know, like like the average height of a person right in the middle of this chart, um, then the actual distribution of people will fall along this curve. Um, so if you if you measured all of the humans and you just took their height, so like, you know, four foot two. Seven foot eight, and you know, five foot seven or whatever's average for people, and you um, you made like a histogram. You put one pixel for each human, and stack those pixels on top of each other. Uh, the the histogram would would trace out this sort of shape. This is the standard bell curve. Um, and. There are a few places you can draw some lines through here. They're called, let's do a different color. Um, can I do math and science units, not silly units? No. Because I have no idea what reasonable guesses for centimeters would be for people's heights because my brain has been trained in silly units. Um, so my examples will probably use silly units. Uh, okay. So, I mean, we'll do rocket scatter in tiles, because that's what, that's what XCOM does. Um, so, if you put some lines through here, in the right places, um, these, these lines mark out what are called standard deviations, um, often denoted 
by the Greek symbol Sigma, um, which looks like this. Whoa, that's not a pencil. Which looks, Sigma looks like this, kind of. Um, I could measure in bananas. <laughs> the, bananas are as useful as feet in, in measuring things, for sure. The, the imperial system is really, really good. Um, I am feeling a lot better. Real, did we, yeah, this mathematical musings is apparently a thing now, and we're going to keep it because people like it. Um, so you get, um, if, if you're running on like a, a normal curve, this is, this is often called normal. Um, you get 34.1% 34 of your population will be in this space on either side. So like the total is 68.2 if you do both sides together, which is what's going to make sense for rocket scatter because we don't care if the rocket scatters to the right or to the left, we just care that it didn't hit the target, right? Um, so you get 34.1 in there, you get 13.6 in here, 0.6% in here. And um, the problem is, with when you're looking at XCOM Long Wars Rocket Scatter, most people's intuition is that the scatter number is some sort of upper bound, right? The scatter number that's displayed is as far as the rocket can scatter. And that is absolutely untrue. The game is programmed so that if you see a scatter of like four meters or four tiles or whatever, that is here, four tiles. Which means you have a 68% chance that the rocket will land somewhere within four tiles of the target and a 27% chance that it will fall outside of four tiles, but within eight tiles. 27. That's really high chance of falling outside of four tiles. So when you shoot a rocket and it goes like wildly, blindly off course, that's a thing. There's even a 4% chance that it goes 12 tiles away. Do not fire a 4 tile scatter rocket. Just don't. It is not a smart plan. This, this section is 2.1%. So if you add up 2.1% to the right and 2.1% to the left, if you add those together, your rocket's got a 4% chance of landing more than eight tiles away. Seems like a lot. Seems like a lot. Um, so, it, it, it can be, like if you think four is the max, it can be really un unintuitive when you rear rocket lands behind you because you shot it like six tiles in front of you, but it went 12 tiles off course in that direction. It can be really, really disruptive. But that, that's a 4% chance, and you guys know aliens hit their 4% shots all the time. All the time. Yeah, I mean, that's slightly worse than rolling a 1 in a 20-sided die. That's, that's a good way to think about it, Lolash. This 4.2% uh, chance. Um, getting a critical failure in D&D is a 5% chance. And you get those all the time. Like 5% of the time. Um, so... The, the bottom line here is, when you're thinking about where your rocket's going to land, the scatter number goes on this first blue line, not some weird upper limit. And in fact, I don't know, I don't know how many decimal places they're calculating their probabilities to. Right? If, they're, if they're stopping at um, two decimal places, there is an upper limit. You'll never, you'll never end up out here because this is like a 0.1% chance. But if they're calculating four or five decimal places, you could end up past the 12 tiles too. There's really, like, in an actual bell curve, there is no actual upper limit. There is, there is an increasingly small chance of being, like, way off at infinity. 
So your rockets really could land, like technically, depending on how accurately they are doing the math, your rockets actually could land literally anywhere on or off the map with very small percent chances. This is the same sort of thing that like, if, if you're interested in quantum mechanics, the quantum probabilities fall on the same type of type of curve. Their curves look different, but it's the same sort of idea. And there is a very small chance that all of your particles could be really, really far away from where you think they are. Um, and it, it's the same sort of probability happening. This first blue line is called the first standard deviation. Standard deviation, or one sigma. And sigma is a value you can calculate if you know lots and lots of things about statistics, but that's sort of beyond the scope of what we care about doing today. Um, so, these are the, uh, these are the things. So this is, this is two sigma or two standard deviations, and this is three sigma or three standard deviations, um, which is like, you might have heard, the other place you'd hear the sigma thing is in confidence levels. Um, when, when the people bring back data from the Large Hadron Collider and they say that we have identified the Higgs boson to within six sigmas of certainty, then they are way out three, four, five, six. They're way out here at six sigmas of probability that what they've seen is what they meant to see. And the chance that it was a blip in the data is that very small chance that lies outside here. That's what they're talking about when they say sigmas. So there you go. I hope that was I hope that was sufficient for our uh, our mathematical musings today. Um, that's that's all I've got off the cuff for standard deviations. Um, but the point is, if you have like this shape in mind, you can you can think more accurately about where you expect your rocket to land. For sure. Uh, what are we doing? We're turning off this so we can play some more FTL. Do we go back? Do we backtrack a little to get more jumps in? Or do we just go fight this ship? Let's just go back a little. Let's not go back a lot. That's greedy. There's lots of, there's lots of jumps over here we can use to delay if we need to. Actually, you know what, I don't know, like, this forces us to go here next, and that could be... Well, I guess we don't have a scanner anyway, so we don't know if that's a disaster. Uh, Logitech webcam, Jeroy, is the one that, that crashed with OBS. I probably need updated drivers for it, is my guess. You reach for your pistol. Oh. Well... Uh, go stand in door control and let this dork die trying to break the doors down. Whoa. Whoa. Calm down. No. No oxygen for bad guys. No oxygen for good guys either. Poor Mage Cron. Uh, you're gonna end up fighting all the mantises. Mage Cron, run to the other room with oxygen, go!
Um, Ma Magecon, run to the other room with oxygen, which is, you know, uh, the oxygen room, I guess? Yay, winner. Did I accidentally go above 20%? I didn't, I wasn't watching. I might have accidentally got above 20% when the ship started filling up before I turned the oxygen back off. What a disaster. It's not fair, Van Dorn. You just became a loner of your because of your decision to not void any warranties. Congratulations. Um, that oh, uh oh. That is all of the challenges. Um, so we can't hire crew, and we can't upgrade except out of store. I really should have done the upgrades. We have like 300 scrap. I really should have done the upgrades a minute ago. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, oxygen. Calm down. You don't get the whole ship. What do you think this is? Real, we can still get crew from events. We're just not allowed to pay for them at a store. We can still, like, get slaves from killing slave ships. We can still get crew from other sort of random events throughout the universe. Um, and you can, you can make a run work with four crew. The real problem with crew comes if we also get slug life. Because slug life and loner combine to only accept slugs from random events. And that's, that's, that's when it gets challenging. Hi, Oak Tree. Thanks for the host, man. Aid the civilian ship. I don't think we want to spend a drone part on this ship. I think we can kill it just with our conventional weapons here. As long as those lasers only fire once. Ah, borders. You're adorable. Oh, right. If I turn off the oxygen before I move, the borders run. I should really put somebody on doors more often. What happens with go on an adventure? Not fair if I have all the fun. We go on an adventure. Jargus says, sounds like fun. Slug life it is. Yay. Yay. Slug life plus loner means we never get crew unless we randomly get a slug from an event. Awesome. Goodbye, Run. It's okay, Magecon's gonna gonna spam clones at that guy until he dies. That's gonna be fine. Um, they can't penetrate our shields with their weapons. So we have all the time in the world to kill them. Oh, I bet you really liked having oxygen in that room, didn't you? Time to fit this. Go 
Cookie Adventures! Mmm. Cookie. Close the doors to Matron's living quarters. Turn on the oxygen. Turn off the sound. And let's go! Let's go on an amazing cookie adventure. Sponsored by Steven. Or at least, like, finished off by Steven. Uh, super amazing adventure. So amazing. <laughs> Eric Zach, I know the Pandora advertisement is lame and it never goes away. And I appreciate that you're willing to sit through it because you love me. I have no control over it. You get what you get. But it's a good way for you to demonstrate your devotion and your determination and your love. And your love is appreciated. I understand the pain of watching that commercial over and over and over. I really honestly do. Let's go on an adventure. Let's who's on this adventure. Who do we... Oh, I have to reset the, uh, the name list. Everybody has been named. This adventure will be starring... Let's go adventure. Let's go adventure. This adventure will be starring, well, Steven. Uh, I can't use numbers in this, so I can't spell your name correctly. But uh, Steven, who unlocked the adventure for us, is a fine gentleman with sweet shades. Epic Nico-chan, whoa, is a fair lady with blue hair. And Doofus Pants is a fine gentleman with short black hair. Historically accurate adventures begin. They traveled in their trusty wagon, a plague cart full of dead bodies. Which is totally, like, historically accurate for sure. Steven came down with black fever. He'll be fine. It'll be fine. Black fever's nothing to worry about. Seeing some animals in an upcoming of the clearing, they hurried ahead. They needed to stock up on food for the long journey. They need to be careful not to kill any skunks. It's hard to differentiate stench from disease. And while we are immune to disease, we are not immune to the stank. A posse of bandits interrupted the hunt. Yay! Rotten horse carcass! Delicious! It's a Christmas miracle, hi Jason! Yeah, uh, it turns out that letting myself stop working and actually sleep yesterday was a really good plan as far as my health is concerned, and I probably should have tried it a few days earlier. Whee! Trying to escape the bandits, they accidentally rode into a cave. These things take more than one hit, we're just going to dodge them. Wow, they take more than two hits. Bad giant spiders, bad. Let me load, let me load, let me load. 
Finally they found their way out of the cave. Yay, Black Fever is over! Steven left the wagon to look for wild berries because he was really hungry after his Black Fever. He found five wild berries. But a bear wanted the berries because their names are the same. That's why chairs like cherries. It was funny, you can laugh now. Rabbit squirrels! Steven ran back to the wagon. I, love, I just want... I just want this... I want this, uh... Music soundtrack to just play in the background for my entire life. I just want to walk around unable to resist the urge to dance really awkwardly like an old white guy. More bears! Quick, distract them with berries! By which I mean, kill them with death. And disease. Ah! So much bears, I cannot dodge them, I cannot kill them. It is a disaster. They entered into the Great Plague. Do fairs like fairies? Yes. Yes, they do. Steven came down with rabies. Now everybody has one hit point. This is... This is a debacle. Oh no! Day 2147483 Buffalo. Why do I have this gun right now? Please not this gun. No! No, do this pants your organs! No, you needed those to live. Day, day number, scene, scene, description. Unhandled exception. No reference exception. This is my computer today. You guys see those sick dodges? Oh man. Program reset. Steve has recovered from space rabies. We didn't even go to space. I didn't even space rabies. Yay, Met. Oh. Yay, Met Kid. We get hit by hard does it work like a termination? It must. Yay, Civil War disease. Now we're gonna get the people shooting this way. Oh, cannons! The wagon's interference in the battle decimated both Union and Confederate forces. The war was lengthened and there was great loss of life. At night, Steven decided to look for a flower for Epic Nico Chen. He'd grown fond of Epic Nico Chen during their travels. Don't tell wise. Steven brought the flower back to camp. Hey! Oh, I love you too! I'm sure that's what she sounds like, I think, probably. Oh, they're gonna go relax! So relaxing! Later, Steven needed to relieve himself, so he left the camp again. Is that a zombie? Can I get ninja stars? Is that what this weapon is? Oh, this makes me want to play Oregon Trail again. It's 
seen this disease can also spread to animals. Zom turkeys! Steven couldn't believe what had happened or that he had survived. They sat around the campfire and just relaxed and enjoyed the nice weather for a change. Cause that's what I do in the zombie apocalypse. When They reached another river. This one was too deep to ford. Steven had the brilliant idea to swim underwater through the river. Alternatively, they could go around it through a desert path. Swim. Hold your breath. Do you guys ever do the thing where, like, when the hero goes underwater in a movie, you try to hold your breath as long as they hold their breath? And inevitably you can't, because movies aren't realistic. Because I do that thing. Don't do that with this river scene. You will die. Ooh, flamethrower. Yay, flamethrowers work underwater, because accuracy is important for this game. Oh, this gun's terrible. Don't be this gun right now! No! Run out of ammo! Okay. And poisonous jellyfish. Hi, piranhas. We are not a cow. Please do not skeletonize us. A giant squid blocked their path. Dodge harder. No! No, blaster squidding. Disaster. Steven's heartbroken. How will he survive without his one true love? And their relaxing times of relaxation. Steven, do you want the contents of the treasure chest? Do you? We're gonna jam out till we get an answer. We shall not open it! He decided it was too scary to open. He has been recently traumatized, probably has a little PTSD from watching his newly acquired girlfriend get gored by a narwhal in a river, which is totally normal. Food supplies were dwindling. Pack of wolves! Smell the blood. This is... This is probably... Where we lose Steven. I'm really bad at wolves. And we have one hit point because of disease. Oh, I got him! <laughs> yeah. Steven recovered from gangrene! There is a chance! Hope was on the horizon! And then a fur trader. Hey fur trader, sell me a new person. We want people. Uh, no. A snowstorm began. The wolves were relentless even during the snowstorm. Side of the trail, Stephen saw a dark figure. Stephen left the wagon to investigate. It's a Yeti! Turns out it was Bigfoot and Bigfoot was bad. Oh! 
ran back to the wagon and Steven left in a hurry. He accidentally drove off a cliff. Some eagles attack the wagon. Whoa. We're gonna win this time. If an eagle doesn't kill Steven. I shouldn't say things like we're gonna win. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say it. Having confidence is not how you win video games. I'm so good at jinxing runs. Disaster. Disaster. But, uh, you know, in the, in the world of FTL, uh, we, got, we got things to do. We got people to save. There I go, with my confidence again. Hey, come here, caffeine. Oh my gosh, I'm almost out. Gotta restock the fridge. Matron, do you have enough oxygen to survive the next fight? Should get the Wagon Adventure song and make it a song to play in Necrodancer? BMB, you're a genius. You're a genius. I am, I am a huge fan, and I would like to subscribe to your newsletter of awesome ideas. Why can't I jump? Oh no, pilot. Magecon stand in the doors. The reason Magecon's in the shields is because then he can respawn and not take any damage. Now that's not that's not I'm not suggesting that the shield room is the best place for him, but that was the logic. I guess this is the same amount of oxygen. So we can still keep our 20% challenge. Oh man, what awesome timing. Okay, bye. Please run out of oxygen, sir. Missiles? Ew. Our shields do literally nothing against this ship. Okay. Hey! Oh, you broke door control! Stupid missile. You can't break the clone bay. Oh no. Um, I need door control fixed fast enough to save the club. Okay, we're good. We're good. You're okay, Mage Crowd. You're gonna be okay. Just finish repairing those doors before you die. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting incentive program, program, Steven. I got it turned off. I remembered. Jump imminent! Why was I not paying attention? Now we don't even get loot. Disaster. Ooh. They left their guy! After them!
Did you get vented on purpose? There wasn't really anywhere to put him. And I, I can't power O2 during battles, so I couldn't refill his room with oxygen, so... He just, he just dies sometimes. It's okay, because we have his pattern stored in the uh, clone bay. A store! A store. We need stuff badly. We're gonna make an extra jump to go backwards to the store. He just dies sometimes. <laughs> Sounds like a cult. Yeah, I mean... Silly fleshy meat sack that needs oxygen. Like, so fragile. Psh, so hard to keep him alive in space. We'll just make copies. It's fine. We make them with 94% of the original memories intact. It'll be fine. Uh, reconstructed teleport's really good if we get a teleporter. Are we early enough that scrap recovery arm recovers if there's enough scrap to pay for itself? That might be a thing. Uh, let's do that. Now... We could go for boarding strats. We could get, we could sell the emergency respirators and get the teleporter and the reconstructive teleport. And that could be a thing. Boarding strats with hacking protocols really strong. You know? That cost us 160 of our 300. What else do you have? Crew we can't hire and a bunch of drones we can't use. I guess we could get drone control, but... Boarding anti-personnel at beam 2. Actually, you know what? Boarding drones! If we're doing boarding strats, if that's the plan, the boarding drone will help us drain their ship of oxygen so that silly fleshy meat sacks die faster when we punch them with our Lanius guys. That's all of our money though. We don't get to upgrade reactors or shields or anything if we do that. Can we even afford all of those things? It would be 85 plus 90 plus 70 plus 70. Which is like more than 300. Because 10, 15, and 30 is less than 70. This is how my brain does math sometimes. That's about 100, that's about 100, that's about 100. We have 300. So is this less than the difference? So minus 10 is 60, minus 15 to make the 85 into 100 is 45, and then minus 30 is 15. We're just a little bit shy. We're gonna sell the, we're gonna sell the re emergency respirators. We actually can't afford this. We actually could. Hi, Monas. The question is, is two layers of shields and three layers of uh, engines is that enough to survive the next three sectors until we get enough scrap to actually upgrade systems? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. It's, we're at sector three. We'll 
probably be into sector five before we can before we can afford a shield upgrade. <laughs> oh, it's such a risk. It's such a risk. We're doing it. It seems it seems like such a terrible idea that we can't not do it. What drone did we get? Defense one. <laughs> Lame. Um, this is a great place to hang out when you haven't slept in 24 hours, Monos. Because that's the, the uh, loopy, sleep-deprived vibe is what we're aiming for here. When I do boarding strats, I'm going to need power. But we don't need weapons. We can turn our weapons off to get power. Or, like, fire our battery or something. It's going to be fine. Aw, oh, what's up? Who has exactly enough money for this stupid plan? This guy! Oh, yeah. Just clean this shop right out. Done. Zero dollars. Best ship ever. <laughs> this is such a good plan! Oh, it's such a good plan. Oh, no! No, the boarding drone can't... Oh, no. Wait, we can sell the defense drone. We can sell the defense drone. Can we even power? If we do, like... We won't be using oxygen. Um, we... Won't be using hacking. And we can power down, like, one rank of... Yeah, we can power both of those. Okay, good. Store. Um, this defense drone, I don't need it. Wait, how much... How much is a power bar? 25, perfect. That's exactly the price of a defense drone. Because this idea just gets better and better and better. <gasps> That's not what I was supposed to buy! I'm an idiot! <laughs> I was supposed to upgrade this for 20, not this for 25! One of the challenges in this list should just be be you and be really good at video games. Ion stunner or the chain laser. <laughs> oh no, I'm so good. I'm so good. <laughs> I bought power instead of system power space because I'm awesome. Um, um, <laughs> Lava.exe has stopped responding. Wait for program to respond. Grayed out with like the thing. I should get that. I should make that a, like an overlay where like I gray out and the little thing pops up, and I should make it so you guys can activate it from chat because I'm too busy laughing to remember. That should be a thing. I'm gonna figure out how to do that. That seems like a really good idea. So we could sell the chain laser, and then boarding would be literally our only strategy. Seems like a kind of awful idea. But, we are Lanius, so we can board and kill automated ships through boarding. Um, well, we're committed now. We're committed to this terrible plan. 
I guess we don't need the drone, right? No, the drone's the only way we kill automated. No, we have lasers. It's okay. It's okay. We're not gonna do. We're not gonna add one more stupidity to the stupidity we already have. Um, auto attacks with. If you don't have a. If you don't have a med bay, if you have a clone bay instead, the reconstructive teleport heals your dudes when they teleport. Like they can walk into the teleporter at ten health, and they'll come out the other side at a hundred. So it's really, really strong with the clone bay and boarding strategies because you can heal your crew. It's really, really good. Hey, remember me? Last time we met, I didn't have a teleporter in my ship, but now we did- You have an entirely different ship! That's so rude. Look at all this extra power we can't put into that boarding drone. I'm a genius. An absolute certifiable genius. Wait. No, certified. Not certifiable. You get what I mean. Um, get him. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. No doors for you. Whoa! Whoa there, Ben. Don't die, buddy. Just keep making that guy run through the room with no oxygen. There you go. Um, you know what? Okay, yeah, we, we want to kill their weapons so we don't die. Um, Jira, the interlacing is the, the camcorder, and I know exactly what's causing that, and the next software patch is supposed to fix it, and I keep waiting for the next software patch. The crash is the webcam. That's worth some money. See, we're at full health. Yay, we're healed. I almost accidentally went above 20% oxygen. I mean, not almost. We were at 9%, but if I had left those rooms closed... Mm, here, and then there, and then out. Prepare to fight. It's the legendary thief, Kazakh Pleskalik. Get him! Ew, missiles, no. Dodge it, baby! Or, you know, take it in the battery, that's fine. Aww. I'm gonna eat a 
second missile. That's not what we need. Mage card! Go fix the shields before you die. We'll heal you with the teleporter or something. I wonder which bar wins this race. You did- Oh, the, the, the repair bar did not win the race. Um, we haven't killed any crew, have we? We need to take out their oxygen. Let's summon these guys back. No. No, that's a bad plan. Don't do that. Let's send one of them to break that room. Yeah, see, because then the, uh... Then the guy's chasing. And he takes damage every time he walks through there. Which is exactly what we want. Hey, now he's dead. And now we hack their clone base so he dies for real. I could let my pilot repair? Oh man, that would have totally saved Magecron's life. Oh, they have a dead crew, right? We can save Matron now. Matron, don't die! Don't die! Aww. He just dies sometimes. It's... It's fine. Yay, we killed him. Now hack this so he doesn't come back to life and we win. Kind of the slow roll on this victory, but I'll take it. Ooh, maybe it's a slug. What if a slug survived? Um, listen to what he has to say. Secret stash. Places everyone, battle stations. Oh, except you two, stay there, that's your new battle station. Okay. Not the most exhilarating fight, a little cheesy, but uh, we'll take the victory. Chalk one up for the good guys. Um, let's repair, how much is missing? Each of those bars is 10, right? We can repair exactly 10, that's efficient. Go. Yay, NG controlled sector. With Kazakh Plyth. Uh, hey, why don't you repair the batteries? Bardaga, no. No, slug. Like, like brain slug. Distress beacon, go. Always go. We're heroes. Weird metal robot heroes that keep letting Magecron die, but heroes. Oxygen's for closers, shields are for winning. Uh, get in the weapons room and disable their ship. Go.
Heroically suffocating our enemies to death. Absolutely relevant. Such heroes. Come in here, smarty pants. Come suffocate to death. Cheese in the AI. Hey, we get oxygen now. Woohoo! Oh, I'm just gonna kill you with fists instead of your pathetic need for air. Oh, you could die with fists too. Great victory! Um, I forget. I always forget this one, and I always have this moment where I'm like, I should know what these do! One of them gives you the healing thing. Like heal bombs, maybe? NG Medbot dispersal? I know I should know this! One of them gives you a ship upgrade that we don't want. Because it's not worth the price. I think we do this one. I think 25 scrap is right. Probably. It's NG Medbot dispersal. I do not want NG Medbot dispersal. Dispersal for 40 scrap. Let alone the missiles in the field. Like, the missiles we're never going to use for anything, so they're, like, that's... That line of text doesn't even exist. The fuel probably doesn't matter, but how much does... The NG Medbot Dispersal doesn't even sell for 40, and we can't equip it in our ship because our augment slots are full. So I think we do this one. And that gets us the healing burst. Which may or may not be worth, like, I mean, the heal burst is really decent with boarding strats. Heal our guys. Or we could sell it for money. Sweet, sweet cash. Uh, improve our reactor for stuff? Yeah. Did I murder them? No, Rillip, I we gave the stuff to an NG ship that they were fighting. We saved an NG ship from that ship and gave the NG some stuff. Yay, a store! I can use my boarding drone now as long as I'm not completely broken and stupid. <gasps> we can still buy weapons. Mm, do we buy this weapon? This sells for 20. We, we just lost 5 scrap. Healing burst also not good. Hull laser charges slightly faster than the chain laser requires the same power, but the chain laser charges faster eventually. Hull laser does extra damage to hull, but usually you want to take out systems. Anyway, I think we sell this. I think we, we you can't not buy a flak when it's offered. Quickly before someone buys self sufficient. Go. I did it. Before someone bought self sufficient. Um, we need more drone control. Because now we can do the boarding drone. And we need. These? We could put another, we could afford to put another point in weapons. And then we could activate our heal bomb. Or, um, or we could do like this, 
all so we could do like this that'd be pretty good for like gunning down ships if we need to just the flexibility is worthwhile okay to the quest marker Oh, they have a missile. Never mind. Get to their weapon room. We need to get that missile down. Oh, yeah. We have a boarding drone. Uh, no flak. Um, no oxygen. Boarding drone. Heal bomb? Boarding drone doing work. Look at him, what a beast. Do we see system power if we go here? No, we can just see where the people are. Oh, right! Right, 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 right. Uh, you stay there, you go there. Uh, you want to stay here and keep the oxygen out of that room so they can't repair it. Actually, no. The faster we kill this, the faster we win the fight. Woohoo! Boarding drone strong. We were more repairing the engines for the next fight than we were, like, they, not, they didn't have any weapons. Our engines weren't doing anything this fight anyway. Wait, what? Why am I fighting not dancing? Thank you, Arnowski. I did need to remember to go dance. Let's dance. We're going to do floor one again because our last attempt at floor one was pitiful. And if we beat it today, we'll move up to floor two. If we beat it, we'll move up to floor two. I need to do, like, we need to do a studio goal for me to have a screen in that direction. So I don't have to look over here to do this because it's awkward. Oh, right. It helps if the uh, game knows that it is the focus and to accept inputs. That's helpful. You guys ready for a life pro tip? If you ever forget your belt, you can just roll the top of your pants under and they'll get tighter as you roll them up and then your pants won't fall off while you're dancing. You look like an idiot, but you know, that's what we do here. Red shovel? What? Dig anything but take damage. I can't afford it. Whoa.
purchase a random item. Shoes! That was a pretty good. Don't worry about me, still terrible at skeletons. Because reasons. Still terrible at skeletons. Disaster. Disaster. Um, okay. Back to, uh, back to disasters in space instead of disasters in crypts. <sighs> What's the plan? This guy has a uh, little bit scary of weapon systems and a med bay. Time to hackums the med bay. We don't need the boarding drone. We're gonna save a drone part. Get that. Turn that off. Um, might as well power the flak and the ion stunner, I guess. Hey! Rude. <laughs> that was that was just awesome. Yes. Whatever, son. Oh, stop flacking them. You don't want to accidentally break something. I need to let that guy out of the, uh... I need to let that guy out of the room. Or they'll keep charging their FTL. Okay, good. He made it out. Now we just kill him. By hacking his med bay. Roscoe Waffle! Thank you for your subscription, Roscoe Waffle. This day belongs to the light, and this hug belongs to Roscoe Waffle. You smell like nachos. Appreciate the support, Roscoe Waffle. Welcome to the Bearded Council. Please enjoy your mighty, glorious battle llama and your cookie hearts. And all of those cookie hearts, the chat's gonna fill up with for you. Those cookies are for you. Yes. Thanks for the subscription. Love your face. Ah, reverse med bay, no! Down you go. Med bay kills. Those feel the most evil. The most evil. They really do, Vaughn. So good. Daddy wants a store. Mine the asteroids. Delicious. Thanks, Scrap Recovery Arm. You just paid for yourself. Distress. Ow. Rude. Hmm. 
I love the, uh... I imagine that noise as the Lanius, like, that's what their voices sound like. Thank you, PFC Grunt. Because you'll need the energy of one cookie. And I just want to see a llama dance. Done. Cookie. And let's... Let's not be a disaster this time we dance. Let's... How about that? Is that a plan? Can we win? Maybe? I'm gonna try to win. Um... Options, music, volume, dance mode, cookie. What if we try to win this time? What if the extra blood sugar from this delicious cookie is the difference between life and death? I'm not used to the size of the dance pad, I think. Like, sometimes I just miss the buttons. But it is really nice to know that when I miss a step, it's my fault and not the dance pad's fault. It is really nice to know. That key's always pretty close to this chest, so I just spam walls. And usually, we get some wingy boots. Yay! Dragon dance? Seems to work for skeletons too. Using a dagger? Is a spear better? Not really. Rather hold out and get a real weapon. Give me that ring of courage. No! No skeleton! I forgot the ring of courage was gonna move me and I had done in my brain and then oh. Stupid brain. Stupid brain. <sighs> Defeated by my own brain. Cosplay as the as the shopkeeper. I should someday. That would be, I think I could pull that off quite magnificently. I think I could. It was a good dance, PFC Grunt, thank you. Appreciate it.
Uh, someday I'll learn how to beat floor one again. A little rusty. A little rusty. I like the dragon dance, like, the dragons last long enough that you can use a pattern. Dragon dance is fun. Um, I didn't pause the game, I didn't turn off the O2, our hacking is hacked. They don't have a med base so it doesn't matter. Go murder them! I am quite afraid of their systems. So, let's send the boarding drone also. Not the O2! No! No, Magecon will die without it! Save our pet flesh bag! Save him! Save the pet flesh bag! What's my opinion of the new dance pad? I am super impressed. If you intend to play dance games at all, um absolutely worth the investment it is it is really really nice it works really really well i'm very happy with it absolutely worth every penny do i live in the u.s i do jroy um in utah to be slightly more specific than america than the united states uh, we have a lot of jumps left. We could go quest boop boop, maybe? Like boo doo doo out? No, we gotta do this one first. Because this will overlap that before we get to use it to get to the exit. Yeah, Lil Ash, I know that feeling. Last night I took some Tylenol PM so that I could actually sleep. Osu World Cup on Dance Pad went. You couldn't even play Osu on Dance Pad because you have to like trace paths and stuff with a mouse. I mean, I guess you could have like. What if you had a connect for. So you're like tracing the paths in the air with your hands and a dance pad for the times you have to click? Maybe? I don't think Osu would work on a dance pad. I mean, maybe, like, if you had a giant touchpad and you had to trace out the paths with your feet? Someone go make that game. Stepmania! I have Stepmania! Um, I... We don't play it very often because it mutes the VODs and make me like fight copyright stuff on my YouTube channel because all the music's copyrighted. Um, but we could we could do like a special Step Mania broadcast sometime and just not plan on putting it on YouTube. That might be a thing. Um, I have not thought that far ahead, Recluse. Probably six. Um, and I'll probably take Sundays off, is I think what we'll do. But I haven't, I haven't really decided what we're gonna do. Free stuff! Uh, we can't go to that store, we won't make it back, we won't get our quest or our exit. Sad, I probably needed that store. Yay, a laser. What's your specialty, Uncle Joe's Fix-It Shop? 
door subsystem for 12. Yeah, we'll do that. Slug Control Nebula! Slug Life! Maybe we'll get some slugs in the Slug Nebula. You took two hits from one floater who suppressed you? Are you sure there wasn't like another Overwatch somewhere? Because that is just a bug, if that happened. Unless... No, no that's a bug. Even if it has like, Danger Zone or something, that's still a bug. Okay, sensors are actually just broken. We cannot use them. Great. Good. Good, 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 good. Uh, store first? No, let's fight this ship first, then store. Hi, slugs. I like the slug music. This game just has a great soundtrack. It's just good. Oh, my boarding drone! Rude! That was the rudest. Stop being so rude. That guy just stood and died. <laughs> that guy. You guys had a brutal weapon system. Oh, he repaired the floor? Boarding drone, get him! Um, board... What? Boarding drone, get him! Yeah, shoot him in his slug face. Fallen Starbound has been on a list of games that I, I've needed to try. Isn't Starbound like Space Terraria kind of? That's been on. I, it's in my Steam library, and I've been meaning to try it for a really long time. Oh, did we win? Oh, we won. Oh, oh, okay. Is it okay for me to use the enemy ship so too? Yeah, Mojo Jojo. The the challenge just means I can't turn this on. If it becomes like if sending Magecron across to the enemy ship is the way to save his life, we can do that. Could I use an extra or better webcam if you... I absolutely could, j -Roy. Absolutely could. Um, if you want to link me one, I'll add it to my Amazon wishlist. That's the easiest way to get one to my house. If there's one you wanted to donate, um, just give me the Amazon link. I'll add it to the wishlist and you can send it to me from there. Um, maybe? Ion Intruder is probably pretty good. No, Ion Intruder is terrible because you can't choose where it goes. If we could choose where it goes, how good would Ion Intruder be if you could pick a room for it to Ion? Oh my gosh. That would be great. I almost want a Defense Drone. Defense 2, though, shoots lasers and doesn't shoot missiles and doesn't work very well. Um... <laughs> Thank you. 
I guess fix the hull and then upgrade the ship. I don't think we need... Oh, they have a page too. Oh, right. We don't need... Okay. They have very few similarities when it gets down to brass tacks. But if, like, if I'm a person who has seen both of them, I'm thinking of the right game when I say... Like, it's the same sort of 2D thing, and you do, um, like, go down to a planet and gather resources and stuff. Um... So, like, on, the, on a very surface level, the two games would look similar to someone who hasn't played one of them. It's time for one more shield layer. It's probably time for more... Um... Yeah, that sounds great, Jay Wright. Send me a link, I'll get it on the Amazon wish list. It's just, um, that way we don't have to do tip fees, and, like, we don't have to deal with PayPal, and, um, you know, you can know exactly what you're sending, and then I get a package, and that's fun, and I'll come and open it on stream, and it'll be, yeah, it's the easiest way to do it. Just give me a link, and I'll put it on the wish list for you. Um, I think that point is good in case we take, like, a damage to that system. We can still have our crew live. Uh, where else do we want points? Someday we'll want more weapon control. Probably not today. Let's accept that. Um, one power there. I've added that to the wish list, Jayroy. Thanks. What was your panic attack about last night, Ballistic Babylon? Um. What was I doing? We were looking at the ship and the store. We were gonna sell. Burst laser one's really good. Is it better than chain laser? I mean, chain, la chain laser is eventually better. But do our fights go long enough that I shouldn't just swap these? It lines up pretty nicely with the flak too, if we want to do like big bursts. It only takes... Oh, it takes two power. It's the same power. In before lunch, pot roast tacos. Oh, those are the best, Rillip. So good, like slow cooked meat tacos. End fight will go longer. But the question is, won't I wait the chain laser? Like, won't I wait for flak anyway? And right now I could have 32 scrap instead of 25. And for intermediate fights, it's better. I don't... Hmm. Maybe we don't need scrap right now. We're not using all our scrap. We can, we can keep it in the storage. Because we're not doing... We're not doing any more upgrades right now. How do you make pot roast tacos? So you'd get like a pork or beef roast. You put it in your crock pot. You put in some kind of sugary liquid. I like to use like Dr. Pepper or Coke. Like you just pour like soda on your pot roast. And then you mix in like, I mean the easiest way to do it is honestly to buy a taco seasoning packet for like $1.25. 
and put that and like mix that into the coke and then pour that over the roast and then just like turn your slow cooker on for six hours and then you have like delicious meat you just shred it into that liquid when it's cooked and let it like soak all the liquid up and then you pull it out with tongs and let it drip dry and put it in your tacos so good And if you want to, like, you can add your own spices and do your own taco mix, but really, like, just a seasoning packet and some Coke. <laughs> I feel like I should spend all of our scrap because we might not see a store for a while. Sorry about the, uh, be glad you're not sitting in the splash zone there. That was really awkward. Um, less than three! It's an EV raid. It's an EV raid. Bearded Castle, you know what to do. Get on your glorious battle llamas and distract these raiders while I prepare the defenses. EV, thank you for the raid. Mods, can we get some love for EV, our, our lovely, lovely raider and host and a beautiful archetype and a great streamer? Can we just get, can we get a little love for EV over there? And I'm going to prepare the defenses. As soon as I remember what button it is. This one! Alright, Eevee, and the less than three raid. It is time. Fight using only the left and right. For me to defend my channel. When you fight, your cursor can be anywhere on the Silver Dollar. Let's do this. We're gonna fight 115 raiders. Bring the pain. No! Disaster! Sometimes, sometimes I like to let a raider get in like three extra damage because I'm dumb and forgot to turn on the thing that makes the thing think it's a mouse instead of a joystick. Hang on, we got this. Okay. Um, we'll be right with you. That Those three damage, those were my gift to you because I love you dearly. left two hit points we can do this oh your heart came out oh <sighs> disaster Evie good raid good raid to you welcome welcome all of you from Evie's channel Thanks for joining us today. We are doing a weird broadcast today. Um, and I'll tell you about it while I'm out of breath. <sighs> today is um, our Java Llama broadcast for the week. It's usually on Saturday. We're doing it Sunday because I was really sick yesterday. 
Uh, but I feel better today. And the way, the way Java Llama works is you bribe me to do silly things like fight ninjas or dance in the Crypt of the Decor Dancer or go on super amazing adventures. Um, we're playing FTL. We have challenges to unlock. You can see the menu over here. The stream tip button is how you participate. Um, we do this about once a week. It's usually a really good time. And I get more exercise than I get the entire rest of the week on that dance pad fighting ninjas. Whoo! Good raid, Evie. You wore me right out. I have probably not recovered completely from my sickness. Or maybe that's at least my excuse for being this out of shape. Welcome. Thanks for being here today. Um, so the main game is FTL. We usually don't spend the majority of the time on FTL when FTL is the game. But uh, the challenges for today, the ones we have so far, are don't void the warranty. We can't upgrade our ship unless we're at a store. Loner, so we can never hire crew. Slug life, so we can only hire slugs. Those two combine to make it so if we gain volunteer crew that we didn't hire and they're not slugs, we have to throw them out an airlock, which is pretty difficult. We have heroism, so we jump immediately to any distress beacon we see no matter how bad the pathing is. And the incentive program means our crew are not allowed to have oxygen until we kill an enemy crewman to incentivize them to fight better. Which mostly means our Lanius crew watches their pet human Magecron die over and over and over because he never has oxygen. That's mostly what we do. Okay. Um... What are we doing? We have 215 scrap and we need to do some upgrades. We could go all the way to four shields. I feel like that's probably a little wasteful. Maybe some dodge for missiles is better. Um, do we hang on to 85 scrap? We're only allowed to upgrade at stores, so I kind of want to pay this scrap now. And just upgrade systems. Awesome, Eevee. Yeah, go go take care of the taquito, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. Thanks for the raid. Thanks for the host. It's always good to see your beautiful face. Van Dorn called me while I was fighting. Oh, I didn't even hear him. I need to dance with Evie. I just can't fight her. That's plainly rude. Thank you, Arnoski. Evie, this dance is for you. Dance break. Gotta turn down the music so we can dance properly. <sighs> okay. Uh, dance. This dance is brought to you by Arnoski and dedicated to the darling and beautiful and wonderful Evie. We're gonna try and pass the floor this time. We're gonna do zone one, and we're gonna get all the way to the boss. We're not gonna beat him, because I'm not that good, but we're gonna get there at least. No magically appearing chest. We're gonna take the blood weapon. Oh, it's a whip! Yes! Oh, I'm the winner. You're not a blood whip. No one wants you.
guard the hallway. I saw the key from the last floor. <laughs> That's funny. Sing to me, shopkeeper. Give me those boots. Xandorin's talking to us. We'll sort that out in just a minute. This is this game is too focused mode. Oh no! My multiplier though! You guys ready for dragon dance? That wasn't a very good dragon dance because we ran out of room. No, skeleton, why did you leave? I didn't even, oh, skeleton, no, no. Disaster, disaster. Whoa, table, don't fall over. I need you. It's okay, I didn't break anything. I tried really hard. I did not break anything. Oh. Oh. All right. Well, that was a that was a good run through the crypt. What did Van Dorn say while we were? Mojo Jojo. Thank you for the cookie. He says I seem tired, and I should have a cookie. Thanks, Mojo Jojo. Um. Mm. Mm. That cookie fills me with determination. Oh, well, thanks for the cookie. Mmm. Mmm. Thanks, Mojo Jojo. That was a good cookie. Hi, Lizardy. Lewd cookie. Kind of. We spent all the money. We bought all the upgrades. It's time to fight some ships. This is a disastrous path. I don't want to go up here. We don't get enough jumps. Take forever to connect back. Ew. Ew, what's up with this sector's map? Alright, I guess we do go this way. Get him! Oh, I wish we could get an unknown weapon for 45 scrap. Kill him anyway! Um, I've made terrible choices. Because... He has actual shields and missiles. This was not a good plan. Your pet human cannot breathe and dies. It fills you with determination. Yes, Jason, exactly. We're so determined. Slugs be trolling, seriously. Stupid slugs. What do they think this is? Oh man! Flax strong! Get in there, kids! I can't believe we took their whole Zolta shield in one volley. Ew, my shields! No! We need those to live!
We don't need weapons, that's fine. Oh right, no one's piloting, they, we can't dodge. I'm an idiot. Get back in the piloting until their weapons are broken. I am dumb. That 30% evade, baby. Evaded two missiles. Oh my gosh, how many missiles are they gonna shoot? Guys, break their systems. Ow. My hull. Whoa, that Zoltan exploded us. That's not, that's not ideal. Why is my pet human in the door section? Because someone's got to hold the door closed when invaders come. And he's holding the doors closed to protect the oxygen in the only room he's allowed to be in. How much of the ship can we keep O2 depleted? The whole thing, I guess. No, Magecron! Their crew's dead, right? We can save Magecron. Quick, run to the teleporter room! Oh no! Disaster. Hey, General. Welcome. Welcome from the raid. Love the late raiders. It's the best. Raiders are never late. Nope. As long as you get here while we're still online, you're good to go. Doesn't that make him a prisoner and not a pet? Uh, PFC Grunt, my definition, my working definition of pet is something that it's a, that's a different species than you. That is your prisoner. So, pet. Because, I mean, really. Really, is there much difference between prisoners and pets? Really? Does Magecon even have any skills? No. No, his his brain has been deleted so many times. We ran out the oxygen in the in that room. Now run out the oxygen in that room. Now the shields. They can't replenish it, just run out the oxygen. Okay, they're gonna die soon. We didn't deliberately deprive him of oxygen, he didn't do his job. He, he didn't earn his oxygen. He did not hold the doors closed hard enough for the boarding crew to kill people fast enough for him to breathe, or something. I'm sure it's, it's perfectly logical. Sure, it's perfectly logical. We only got 34 scrap for that. Gross. Off you go. Ooh, another store. We don't have any money. This this sector has the trolliest layout too. Chain better than charge? Um, wait, letting your fish out for fun is kind of like not letting Magecron out of the ship. Those are those have the same effect on our pets. I like that. I like that comparison. Um, the chain laser laser is way better than the charge laser. The charge laser is just made of money. Oh, I could have heal bombed Magecron. Why didn't I heal bomb Magecron? Because it wasn't charged up. Because I didn't power up the weapon. Never mind.
Um, we might find free repairs. I don't think we're hurt enough to repair. Do we need to upgrade the ship? Oh, we're coming back! We're coming right back to the store, because we're going to go get this one so we get one extra jump out of this disaster of a sector. Nope! Um... Yeah, seems reasonable. Get him! Oh. That puts a kink in my plans. Good thing we have hacking. <laughs> and flacking. Um, let's get the ion stunner and the heal. No, 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 no. Let's get this heal bomb and the boarding drone and the ion stunner. And... Ah! Piloting perfect! Get him. Oh, they have a defense drone? That thing doesn't die of oxygen. Haha, ha, med bay. Oh no, the door wasn't closed. Aw, weak. Oh, don't be on auto fire. Wasting missiles. Their pilot died, so we can turn on the O2 for Magecron, yay. The doors are closed, the drone's in there. Kill him. Take all the oxygen out of the shield room for when they come in here. Whoa. Whoa. We don't have to kill the medbay, we hack the medbay. That's kind of like killing the medbay, except better, because their medbay actively damages them. It's so good. Save the drone! Save Wally! Save him! Um. What a, what a disaster of a zone. This map, like, the, the disconnected maps are so rough. Um, fuel for drone parts. We're a little low on fuel. I don't think we want to do that. Running out of drone parts, we can still win fights. Running out of fuel is a disaster. I did use the heal bomb on the enemy ship, Steven, in that fight. In that fight, we did. Give them all the missiles. We, don't, we only need, like, ten heal bombs. It's fine. That scrap. Um, one more and back, I guess. If this is distress, we just decided to dive. Oh, these are the guys with the stupid O2, and their weapons can't pierce my shields, and we just go like this. We win.
All oh, right, Mage Crown doesn't get O2 though. We're gonna go try and drain the oxygen out of their ship a little bit faster to see if we can save Magecron. Should be pretty quick with their O2 non-existent. Like with no with no O2 room, this should work pretty fast. There you go. They're empty. Goose chase! You'll never take me alive, slugs! Lanius boarding parties are so fun! <laughs> Break their O2 and then just run through the hulls of the ship, choking up all their oxygen. <laughs> Whee! <sighs> Why would you not build a door to your O2? Because if there's no access to your O2, no one can go break it. Or something. This ship is the best layout. It's so good. Yay! Next sector. Civilians. We didn't get any slugs in the slug nebula. So much for slug life. I'm in your base breathing your air. <laughs> yes, rubber toaster! Oh my gosh, so good. So good! Oh, you think so, Automated Scout? You think so? You're not going anywhere, son. I'm sure the thing, Steven, in the minds of the Lanius is STUPID OXYGEN DEPENDENT MEAT BAGS! That's... that's what I imagine. Oh, their FTL's charging. We should... we should stop that. Ah, uh, that didn't work. No! Please, Flack! Please! Oh, I forgot to do the... I am not smart. I am not smart. At least I recovered my crew. Didn't let them jump away with my crew. I was half smart. I forgot to refill Magecon's oxygen. And my drones are offline! Rude. Rude. Oxygen deprivation, go. They put borders in my ship? Are they dumb? Oh, their weapons can get through my shields. That was not the plan. Oh. Their crew just got super murdered, though. Go super murder more crew. My clone bay! Oh no. Oh no! How do we save Magecron? We heal bomb him. Uh, turn on the battery, I guess. 
I don't like heal bombing. Go! Save the mage cron! Oh, their crew's dead. We can turn on oxygen, too. Maybe that's the thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't get O2. Well, heal bomb. We, he doesn't need two. He doesn't need two heal bombs. He's fine. We, we gave him enough air to breathe. Can you dodge your own heal bomb? That can't be a thing. You always hit your own ship, right? So many good jumps. Um, let's go up. I think there's more connect connectivity up. Oh, they have a healing room. That means we have to spend dro drone parts. That bomb was full of explosive healing, Vaughn. Nice. Shield room, that's that's awesome. Teleport on top of that. Actually, you know what? No, don't. Teleport into weapons. Weapons! We have to wait for the door to close, so they don't just run right back out. Come on, door. Come on, door. And yeah. <laughs> ah, med bay betrayal. <laughs> Who's dying? Mage Cron. Don't die. I keep hitting B for bomb, but B is totally for battery. Silly backup battery. down there, borders. Oh, oxygen bombs aren't good enough. That's not gonna save Magecron. He has four hit points, and the oxygen bomb has too much time left on it. Disaster. Disaster. Oh look, they came over to my ship! They forgot about reconstructive teleport and now they are dead and I can turn on the O2 for the new Mage Cron to breathe. Mage Cron Mark 27. Finally gets air. Let's make sure there's no more air in the uh, weapons room. We don't want them to... We don't want them to accidentally breathe anything and, like, repair their ship. Die? Keep draining the rooms. It's time for it's time for the draining runaround. Okay, good.
Stop bombing mage crabs. We have bombs left for the boss. It's not. It's it's a little bit. Seems a little bit mean, but it's probably right. It's probably right. Oh, he's got missiles. It's not great. He's got hacking, too. I guess we need to wait and see what he hacks before we decide what to do. Uh, that's probably fine? Oh, I can't take power out of them. Let's juice up the battery for the boarding drone. Yes! Oh my gosh, the O2! What a what a perfect place! What a perfect place to hit! La 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 la. Oh wait, wait, kill their weapons. We're still taking missiles. Oh, they... how did they die? What killed their crew? There was still oxygen and... how did... Uh. Okay. Hey Sparky, thanks for... thanks for watching, appreciate it. I was, it just it just feels good when people say stuff like that. Thank you, Sparky. The boarding drone punched them to death? Good job, boarding drone. Wally is the best. We should give Magecon some oxygen. Alright, Magecon, take a deep breath and run back to the room you live in. Kumis. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> no! What is, what is happening right now? Um, okay, so this distress beacon is one, two, three, four jumps away that way. Or one, two, three, four jumps away that way. I think if we could go back through the nebula, we're less likely to have to dive to get to the distress beacon. Downloading a map is a disaster. Never download a map. Oh my gosh. All right, we're going back. We're going this way. It's a, it's a blank jump, but overall I think it saves us jumps because the, uh, because the fleet won't pursue as fast. Oh, it's only three jumps. Yeah, we have to go this way, because it's faster. I hope when this ship dies, we get some fuel. We've got a missile, so you guys go there. Um, we're running a little low on drone parts, but I think we need to kill this quickly. We're running a little low on hull. Fuel bomb. Fuel is no consideration for heroes. That is absolutely true. We are not concerned with our own welfare. All the distress beacons will be give me fuel because reasons. Oh. <laughs> At least... Like, at least the fire doesn't matter? Sorry, Magecron, sorry. Uh, you want to get to the teleporter room. Maybe we can save you that way.
Oh, that's genius! They all ran through to try to fight Magecron and we shot them to death! That is... that is the best result! Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Magecron, go hang out with these guys in the not air. Uh, we repaired the O2, so welcome home. By the time you get there, there should be just enough air to breathe. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Being the human on the Lania ship is a rough life. It is a rough life. Alright, we gotta get the oxygen up to like 12 or 15 percent before we jump. We can't be just killing off Magecon willy-nilly. I mean, I guess we can. It's not like he loses skill points or anything. Like, he doesn't have any to lose. Uh, the sensors don't work in nebulas anyway, but he will run him back and forth between those rooms. We didn't get any fuel for killing that ship. I sure hope this distress beacon gives us fuel. Yep, you can absolutely have missiles. Heroes! Heroism is for winning. Board and investigate. Intruders! They turn to feeding on each other, and my crew is next, but none of us are made of meat except Magecron! Oh no. Uh, close the doors on the humanitis. Turn off the O2. Afternoon, Celine. I'm glad Santa got everything for Christmas. That is, every year that feels really good. That momentous occasion when you're done Christmas shopping. Oh, so nice. Goodbye, humanitis. It's been fun. Welcome to door level three. Destroyed. Can't I just cook them up some extra mage crons? I guess I could. I guess the clone bay doesn't work that way. There are lots of ethical issues if you clone someone who's already alive. That's... Uh, so the clone bay is hard hard coded not to be able to clone someone who's still alive. Um, to the store. What do we even want to buy at the store? Burst laser one. If we have flak one, burst one, burst one, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We can still buy weapons. We're not locked out of buying weapons. Yeah. Reference to your favorite film, The Prestige? I haven't actually seen The Prestige. I always meant to. I don't know how I managed to not see that movie. I meant to. Huh. Look at all these weapons we have. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. Get in here. Get out of here. Get, uh, we'll put you in for the boss fight. What's that? Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Weapon systems? Yeah, raw, raw weapon systems. Um. Uh, we want to fix the thing to about half of that because they're they're like random events that can heal those last five, so we don't want to spend scrap on it. Um, shields, shields. Uh, we have enough weapons for fully upgraded weapons too. That's really expensive. I think shields are more important, but we got to start working on weapons.
Okay, undo. Back to the shit, back to the store. Store? Because we probably should have, like, a fuel. I don't want to overbuy fuel, because we find fuel. But we did get dangerously close to not having any. Um, let's look at the jump map. We do have two more stores. Maybe I shouldn't have bought that weapon. Maybe that was premature. Do we do both those stores? Maybe we do one store, fight, go, go exit? Something like that? Does this... <laughs> yeah, we're going to one more store. That store will have drone parts. Oh, this store only has three. Uh, let's go to the store, and then we'll decide about ship upgrades. What if we go the other way? What if we go here, and then here, and then the store, and then waste fuel, and then... We'll have more scrap to do upgrades at the store? Now we're okay. Med bay, cloaking, mind control, burst laser one. Do we get do we get burst laser one the bursting and sell the chain laser and just know that all our burst lasers fire at the same time and life is fantastic? We can just put them on auto fire and worry about our boarding party rather than having to like micromanage weapons. That's totally worth it. All right, ship upgrades. Burst laser one. The bursting. May your lasers always burst. <laughs> burst laser two. Next time it's personal. Burst laser three. This time it's personal. We need that so we can get three burst lasers online. Do we need all these power bars? Maybe we can afford the, uh, the last shield for not having power bars? We're gonna have to do some real power management until we find a store if we do that. So if we go... Burst, burst, burst. We need one more power. And then we still are like three off the boarding drone and two off max shields. Let's just upgrade piloting. Mm, we'll find power somewhere, it's fine. You think we need more than ten more drones? I don't think we need more than 10 drones. Mercenaries are worse than rebels. The only honorable course of action is to turn off your oxygen and turn on all your burst lasers. We hardly need all this shield power. Oh my gosh, stupid missiles.
Ew! Why didn't you guys- you're supposed to break the shields in one volley, that's the whole plan. Good dodge, though. 32% evade. Working miracles. Thirty-two percent of eight. No, three damage. That's that is pretty brutal. Get out of here! You don't want to fight us. We're in your O2 room, and there's no air. Go, go away. Uh, we do want to kill your pilot, though. Um, do we need four fuel and seven missiles? I'm gonna go with no. Never accept surrender. Uh, never die, either. Teleporter, finish. Oh, I don't want to shoot them because I don't want to blow up their ship. Needs more teleporter power. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Before he fixes the missile. Run this room out of oxygen. Don't die! Don't die! Outrun the mighty mantis! No! No, they killed one. Okay, let him kill you both. I'm sorry, Magecron. I'm sorry, there's, there's nothing I can do for you. I can't save you, son. It is a shame that it's not the slug ship we can just zoink for again. <laughs> yes! Ah, zoink for him! We're gonna send a boarding drone. Punching skill level two. <laughs> Sorry, Magecron. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, Magecron Mark Three. Super unfortunate this thing that keeps happening to you. We're gonna get him though. We're gonna get him eventually. Their O2 is strong enough that um, that their ship's not bleeding out through that hull breach. That's pretty rough. No, did you die? No, don't die. Come on, fire. Keep working for me, fire. 
We'll be able to send new boarders in in just a second. No! No, Clone Bay! Do not come back online. Get in there. They fixed it! They fixed it. It's on fire still, though. Oh, their ship's gonna explode! All of this dying and being cloned is for nothing. Because as soon as the clone bait goes off power, the ship explodes. Disaster. What a waste. What a waste of effort. We were trying so hard not to kill the beautiful ship. Was this FTL or Lemmings? Yes. Yes indeed, Rillip. What a waste of Mage Crons. Oh, disaster. Disaster. Someone clearly needs more caffeine so I can make better decisions. So that's how decision making works, right? Um, we probably need to dive straight to the exit now. Sell all the missiles. Go to the exit. Mm, repair five. Next sector. Distress, go! No thinking, only jumping. Because we're heroes. Find the ship. Aww, aww. Aww. They were dead. We didn't get to be real heroes. Real heroes. Um, listen. Human. Mantis is grateful to see another human. Introduces himself as Robert Airlock Fodder. And, oh yeah, look at our engines. Do not join our ship. Do not join our ship because we would just have to kill you. Sweet. Sweet, how much did that cost? That was like 60 scrap or something. That's fantastic. They turn and fight. Uh, they can't hurt me. They do have a clone bay though, so let's disable their clone bay. Oh, they can get through my shields. What is that laser? That laser's abominable. Two crew are dead, I can turn the oxygen back on. I'm a cheater. I don't know why potato peeling your finger is when someone's bad, but it is. It's time to Zoidberg their ship. Oh, if we kill door control, we can Zoidberg all the oxygen out. 
Oh, or that guy could just run in and die. That's also fine. That is also fine. We win. That would cost me a Magecron. Oh. Oh, Magecron, buddy. Chat demands I sacrifice you to my failure. Why are my nails black? They're not black. They're, they're like, like pomegranate. You just can't see the color very well. They're like purpley. And they are this color because I have a two-year-old. And then, like, I haven't washed it off because every time I see them while I'm doing something, I'm like, oh, I'm so pretty. And I just kept it. Is that weird? I don't think it's weird. It's fine. I feel pretty. And that's what we're going with. Halberd beam. Halberd beam. Three power. Not, not good enough. Not better than lots of lasers. I feel pretty. Um, nope. Don't actually want any of these things. Maybe defense one. Maybe defense one. Almost definitely like three fuel. No, I think we're just gonna ask these guys to upgrade our ship. We can power all the lasers. How beard has beard in it, I have to use it. Fair enough. I, I can't refute that logic. Oh man. We can power all the lasers now. Assistance requested danger present imminent destruction. Respond to the call. Foolish meat sacks! Wait, wait. You're the meat sack. Heal just kill their weapons operation. They got him! They got him. Disaster. Tee hee lasers. <laughs> that killed two people! <laughs> uh, awesome. They have ion bombs that don't even do damage? Oh my gosh. This ship is not scary. I am not afraid of it. It's time to Zoidberg them. Oh. I mean, it's time to move into their O2 room so they come out and fight us and die.
foolish meat sacks are talking about the our ablative magecon armor? Oh. We're actually using to block many shots. I kind of wish we could. Like, if we could have him float around the ship like a drone and just soak up, like, laser fire. Might be more useful than standing at door control. We should put him in... We should put him in, uh, sensors. Um, okay. What are we doing with all of the Magecon corpses? That is an excellent question. Because we probably have like 40. He's got a clone bay. He's also got scary weapons. Uh, let's hack weapons and teleport to the clone bay. Oh, we used recycled parts in the clone bay. We put the we put the old body in and used the material. That's that's very clever. I didn't! I was supposed to turn off their weapons! I hacked them and I forgot to depower them before they shot at me! I am the worst ever. Oh, right in the Mage Cron, too! He needed that oxygen to live! Oh, Magecon, fix door control, quickly. You're not going to fix it before you die. Just go hide. Okay, they have dead crew. We can have oxygen. Um, is all their crew dead? All of them except for this clown. Hey! Hey, come back here, you! I'm gonna kill that guy. With fire. Woo! Burst laser, Mark 1! That's exactly what we needed. Oh no, Johnson, no! No! Oh. I don't want to throw him out the airlock. We're just going to decline him. Hi, War Master. Ow! Got to get those final licks in. Rude... Rude enemy ship of rudeness. No, it's not hiring, but we also have slug life. So we can't even accept non slug free crew. If only he was a slug. Boop, boop, boop.
Yeah, Sparky, the two, like, loner and slug life don't combine very well, so the the solution is that the answer becomes only accept free slugs. Like, that's how those two overlap. That's that's the Venn diagram that I have chosen to use. It's not it does it's not strictly true to the text, but there's not a lot of room over there to put a big long explanation. We should murder Magecon and make another. Unfortunately you can't teleport people to your own ship. Or we could just reconstructive teleport him. But he will heal a little bit when we jump. Distress! See, look at all that. Look at all that extra healing he got from the jump. Oh, let's beam them aboard the ship! Hi, Lauren! Our ship does not have oxygen. Nor a clone bay, for sure. There's no clone bay on here. Bye, Lauren. We don't even need to put her out the airlock. We don't have an airlock. Lauren's like, no! Don't you have any air in your ship? I will not accept my fate! <laughs> Deleted. Bye, Lauren. We'll use all your little weird NG robo parts to upgrade the ship, thanks. You were such a good Lauren. Thank you. Yay, yeah, lunch. <laughs> Repair arm, hacking stun, life form scanner, defense drone, intruder drone. We just upgrade the ship. Is it iced tea? No, I think it's apple juice. Really? It's just apple juice. I know weekends are the best when my wife is home and makes me lunch. It's the best. <laughs> okay. To the end sector. Can this ship win the end game? Can you win with flak burst lasers and boarding lanius? Seems really, really risky. Mind control? More like nope. Not afraid of their weapon system, go for O2. Stop mind controlling my mage crown, that's my mage crown. Oh, I mind controlled their guy? Awesome! Get all your oxygen out. La 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 la. You can't chase me around. You don't get to breathe because you're stupid robots. Whee! No oxygen for you. No, Zeramar, no! I don't want to blow you up, so you just uh, get declined. Mm -hmm. 
Silly oxygen-dependent machine people. I know they're like like piles of nano robots or something, but I still think of them as machine people. Off we go. Loss of cabin pressure achievement unlocked. Which means... We can finally let Magecron roam the ship. He can help us, like, run systems and things. We're going to give him access to all of the things that might need repairs. Fight, store, repair, and then by by then the ship will be nearby and we can kill it. Let's go get some scrap, baby. What happens when borders? We just open all the doors. <gasps> Defense drones! Disaster. I just wasted a drone part. It doesn't look like we are overpowering their their healing with our lack of oxygen. So that was not a good plan. We'll try again. It might work now that it's half broken. Now are we winning the fight? Uh, almost. Med base still too strong. Oh, they managed to get it repaired. But I broke all their drones. So that's something. Get them. Teehee. What a cruel way to kill people. It didn't work! We're gonna wait for the medbay hack to be ready. Close enough. Yeah, my, my, we sent so many lasers at them that we spammed both of their drones down somehow, magically. Um... We're not gonna get the hack in time, are we? Does there maybe heal me when I hack it? Oh no, but it makes them run for the door. So it saves my guy's life. We can turn the O2 on, because they're dead and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
He can't get out. Oxygen deprivation, Hector! Now Hector knows what Magecron feels like. <laughs> nope. Let's go do this fight and then the repair, maybe? Hopefully the repair doesn't get overwritten by the the combat. Sensors indicate you're under attack. Clone Bay. Rude. You question the ethics of continuing cloning your crew and immediately sending them to their deaths? You can question the ethics, but you can't question the efficacy. Cause yeah. Missiles? You guys might need to eat a boarding drone. Where do we get power? Here? Uh, we could hack the clone bay. We could hack the weapons. We could send a boarding drone. Boarding drone. Nice. Boarding drone to the shield room. Boarding drone to the shield room. Dodge harder! Not great. That guy's just standing in O2. He's like, I need to breathe. The scary monsters are here taking away the oxygens. that missile offline. Get the missile offline. Okay, missiles are offline. That's fine. Let's kill their clone bay now. Oh, they all suddenly care. Alright, they are officially dead. We can power O2. For Mage Kron. Um, B -b 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 -b. didn't dodge that missile. He's got a lot of experience in clone bay usage. If only there was a clone bay experience stat and he could get cloned faster because the clone bay has so much practice. Bay. What do you think this is? You don't get to repair the clone bay. Fight me, bro. 1v1 me in the O2 room.
With teleporter power? Do we want quick teleports for the boss fight? I legitimately don't know what to upgrade now. Teleport faster to, to get the main guns. Okay. Game on. Hacked my door control. <laughs> Missiles first. <laughs> go, Mage Gun, go! <laughs> Get those repairs, buddy! Why am I not firing my weapons? I should probably be firing my weapons. Like, at their shields. Disaster. Oh, we killed a crew. We can turn O2 on. Mage Kron can breathe. Get back in the dodge room. Oh, good boarding drone! That is awesome. Um, the next place you guys go... Shields more important. Got very little stuff left to actually dodge. All the burst lasers. It's okay, Von Arctus. There's three phases. I'm sure we'll get interrupted. you're hungry because you saw my awesome tuna fish sandwich on toast that my wife made me? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you hungry. I meant to make me less hungry, though.
Round two. Where do we get power for the boarding drone? Um, eh? No! All oh, right, defense drone. Dumb, dumb, diddy, dumb, 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 dumb. Magecon, save the shields! Uh, um... It's okay, we'll get a new Magecon. The new Magecon will save the shields. Battery, teleported power, retrieve these guys, and we can send them back, back out quicker. Um, boarding drone? No, he just gets shot down by the defense drones. So more dodge. Fight! Power surge detected. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. They've got dead crewmen. Fix the breach, you guys get back into the teleporter. Magecron, you're on repairs. I probably should have used my hacking at some point here. Oh my gosh, so many beam drones. What is happening right now? Just kill their ship, please. I'm scared to go over there now because what if like my flak and my lasers kills their ship? I think we just tough it out. We are a little on fire, which makes me want to do one of these. We don't care about fire. Come on, next volley. Good. I am fairly sure that I want to see that cookie eaten very slowly, bit for bit practically see it crumbling piece to piece in your mouth so that we can all bathe in the glory of the cookies. Thank you, Stephen. I will eat the cookie with exquisite slowness. It'll be a good distraction from this intense boss battle. I don't have a lot of hole left for phase three. Do not have a lot of hull left for phase three. But I think if we're gonna do this cookie excruciatingly slowly, we ought to do it here. It is a beautiful cookie. Almost as beautiful as my beautiful fingernails.
Oh, cookie. Oh, cookie. Um. Mm. Who's been a good cookie? You have. Mm. Oh, cookie. Oh, you're so good. Mm. Normally, Cookie, you wouldn't have lasted this many bites. And this would be the last bite. But I just want to savor you. So we're going to make you three bites. Mm. Oh, Cookie's so good. Mm. Mm, that could be. Delicious. Um, right, so intense boss battles and stuff. Really? Oh, that's really funny. That's better than a scrap recovery arm, I guess. I guess? The nail polish really lends to the awkward while we're eating the cookie. Calamari, great. Great. I voided the warranty? No, I didn't. We didn't upgrade the ship, we just, like, replaced a weapon. We can do that. It's it's this screen we can't do anything in. That repair sound. They're just, like, telling soothing lullabies to all the machinery until it gets fixed. That seems like a technicality? No, that's... I mean, never upgrade the ship was intended to mean this upgrade screen, and nothing else. It's these buttons that are upgrades. Now let's close all the Mage Cron doors. So that he can do repairs to all the things. We do not have a lot of hull, and we can't get hull back. So this is pretty scary. Because they have mind control and a super weapon and they're gonna kill- No! No! <laughs> ah, I don't have mind control to counter their mind control. He's gonna kill my teleporter room. Earlier this day, Lama met this wonderful cookie at the bar and invited it to a drink. After a while, the two decided to dance in the wonderful light of the crypt of the Necrodancer. Hey, cookie. Hey. Do you want to go dance with me? Oh, I thought you'd never say yes. 
Thanks, Steven. We will we will take this cookie on a dance break. And I think that also is a super amazing wagon adventure. Oh no, I can't math good. <laughs> when did I forget how to add? I'm the worst. <laughs> awesome. Can't add. Adding is overrated. Really. Like, the, the ability to add? Silly. Silly. Um, alright, Crypt of the Necrodancer, you're on. Uh, this one. Yeah. We could do a really good musing about arithmetic. I like arithmetic. I've got a, I've got a plan for what we could do about that. All right, no belt. We got. Hey, my belt's right here. I could just put it on. That could be a thing. Now, my pants won't fall off when I'm dancing, and we won't get immediately banned from Twitch. I tried to step out of the camera to put my belt on, and I just stepped halfway in between the cameras, and you can still watch me put my belt on. So, uh, it was effectively done. Super, super effective. Get okay. down here! Not fair if I have all the fun! Ninjas! Ninjas everywhere! Um, as soon as we get out of this crypt, we'll fight those ninjas, Ernoski. We will. We will defeat them. But I got to dance with this cookie first. Oh, cookie. Whoa, that's dangerous. Oh my goodness. Uh, one of the push pins I used to keep my green screen on the wall was like on the dance pad. I could have stabbed giant holes in my foot. Where did you fall off from? I guess here? <laughs> Whoops. Invisible push pins. Try our luck, it's only 10. Ooh, an apple's good. Apple's worth 10. Tempo down, okay. Oh, stop dying to skeletons, me! Delicious cheese. Stupid bat. Cookie's enjoying our dance party. Sing for me!
Dragon Dance! I watched that guy step on the spikes and I was like, good, he's gonna hit the spikes. And then I just stepped on him too. Do I want this sword or the whip? No, the blood sword's better because it heals me. Ooh, fancy whip. so well, Cookie, we were having such a good dance. <sighs> oh no! The need is coming! Oh my gosh. Oh, I just said fire his donation. The, the second one that fired during 
The dance party <laughs> says stuffed dollar in dancer's G-string. <laughs> oh, fiery. Thank you for taking it there. Thank you for taking it there. Oh, oh, fantastic. Oh. There's, there's more to the story of the cookie. Steven says, Once they got home, the cookie talked about their job and having a problem. So Heroic, heroic Llama decided to save her day and career by giving her a math lesson, even though Llama is unable to properly math. Um, okay, so the, the next math lesson, um, which we will do, is, um, okay, wait, this was for the dancer, that one was, and then this was, I think, the last cookie, and a math lesson. Um, which puts us over our adventure goal. So we'll go on an adventure right after this math lesson. Um, we need Microsoft Paint again. And uh, we're going we're gonna to delete all this stuff. And by delete, I mean make a big white rectangle over. Oh, you're supposed to be a filled rectangle. Fill, solid color. There you go. Um, we just we just fought the ninjas, Ernoski. I barely defeated them. We we just got done with the ninjas. Like right after the dance party, didn't I fight? Like I barely won. We were on our last hit point for like twenty ninjas. And I almost fell off the dance pad because the game delayed and I had to like hold my foot in the air for the last hit. That was... That was the ninjas. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! I didn't add the ninjas to the total. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's Ernoski's... That's Ernoski's adventure. Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, the ninjas came on an invisible wagon. Okay, we'll do math in a minute. Because that is the, the right order. I, I missed the adventure. That is the correct order. Let's go on a super amazing adventure. And then we'll talk about arithmetic. Um, I have a thing, Steve, that my character, like, there's skills you can unlock, and they all go off after a certain number of hits, and for the ninja game, or for the, the health game, every time I kill 99 ninjas, I get 1 HP. So the problem, probably the reason you've never seen it before is because before we had the new dance pad, I could only beat like 50 without dying, um, but now you should see me gain 1 HP for battle. Ernoski um, has decided that we should go in the invisible wagon. He's a fine gentleman with sweet shades. Uh, he will be partying with Samurai Knight. A fair lady with something else. And off tanker. A fine gentleman. Music is really loud. Um, the spots on the wagon work like this. If you are the person who unlocks the wagon, if you're the last person to push it over, you get a spot, and the other spots come from the patron list on Patreon. The music isn't loud, it's historically accurate! They traveled in their trusty wagon, which was invisible. Seeing some animals in an upcoming clearing. They hurried ahead. 
They needed food for their long journey. They saw a unicorn in the clearing. Seeing the unicorn. I mean, the unicorn was leading them into a trap because unicorns are jerks. Delicious, delicious jerks. I made it too quiet. We got, whoa, now I made it negative infinity decibels. That's way too many. Is that, is that a decent balance? Um, unicorns are delicious. We don't have time for this. We're hungry. Mm. You're expecting Oregon Trail or Oregon Trail? No, this is this is Super Amazing Wagon Adventure Turbo. A machine gun armed bandit wagon arrived. The battle passed through a large nest of skunks. Ow! The bullets passed through my face. And ask you left the wagon to look for wild berries. Well, the, the title of the game is Super Amazing Wagon Adventure. It is, of course, completely historically accurate. Of course. Upon lighting a torch, you found it was filled with guns and ammunition! Shotgun, shotgun, shotgun! And Asuki returned to the wagon with all of the shotguns. Oh, it's not your day, Crimson Panda. I'm sorry. It's terrible. Always jump. I never quite jump to space. Or like dogs with bees in their mouths. When they bark, they shoot bees at you. And then the Great Plains. They came across a large herd of buffalo on day two of first. This gun is so much better than. Stop saying anything positive about how you're doing, Llama. You just get people killed. Oh my gosh. I was so excited that the shotgun was killing all the day, day number scene scene description. Dead glitchy face. No! 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 I was so sure I was small enough to dodge there. Program reset. Ernaski was all alone. Faster wagon wheels. 
Oh yeah. Defend the Falcon from the Coyotes. After coming from its injuries, the Falcon was a useful hunting partner. It could hunt four buffalo at once. Or, you know, seven. He thought about the companions he'd lost so far during the journey. Aww. Aww. Zombies! It seemed that this disease had also spread to animals. Zom Buffalo! I guess that's better than Zom Turkey. I asked you couldn't believe what had happened, or that he had survived. He reached another river. This one was too deep to ford. Falcons are excellent, excellent piranha hunters. Water buffalo, water buffalo, buffalo, water buffalo, 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 buffalo. Or something. You know, some, some number of the word buffalo followed by some number of the word water. Because water buffalo, totally, this is how water buffalo works. A giant squid blocked Ernowski's path. A giant health potion blocked Ernowski's airstrike. Ernowski, do we open the treasure chest? Ernowski says open. Always open. Disease pistol. <laughs> oh no, we need to kill 40 animals before nightfall. We gotta keep Ernowski alive. One, two, three, four. Because, you know, eating 40 animals is totally, totally normal. We win! Nightfall came. The day's hunt was successful enough that Arnoski's forestalled starvation. Faster wagon wheels? Can this thing even go faster? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna die. <laughs> ah.
wolves burning alive ran out from the lava flow. Because, you know, that's how lava and wolves both work. Volcanic bombs rained down from above. The lava got closer. I missed a health pack! And a shotgun. Distracted by the lava, Ernaski drove off a cliff. Good thing our faster wagon wheels work in the air. Some eagles attack the wagon. Good thing I'm more maneuverable in the air than a bird. Because historical accuracy! The wagon, now a raft, went down the river. Ernaski dodged some boulders. Fast wagon, fast invisible wagon dodging boulders is about exactly where I want to be. I never could have made that in a regular wagon. Don't say positive things, Llama! It's still a disaster and you're gonna lose. Be careful. For some reason, there are a bunch of alligators. Get out of here, alligator. The, the airstrike didn't kill the alligator? And asked you notice something on the horizon. It was a bandit on a raft. It seems the bandit had followed him and set up an ambush. Stupid rock, stupid bullet, stupid fast wagon. Can't dodge bullets, wagon too fast. I almost dodged into that bullet. No, 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 no! <laughs> A slow lingering death! No. <sighs> Game over. Oh, if I hadn't dodged into two bullets, it would have been fine. I should have declined the second set of faster wheels. Alright, so anyway, um, about math. This is, uh, this is, we're going to talk about, um, in, in Microsoft Paint. I don't know why I have Paint open. We're probably not even actually going to use it. Um, but the, uh, the math lesson here is going to be why I think imaginary numbers is the worst possible name for imaginary numbers. Okay, so imagine that there was no math. Like, nobody has written down math yet. We don't teach math to kids. Like, nobody... It's, it's just not even a thing, right? It doesn't exist. But, you know, it would be useful when you're out, like, fishing. It would be useful to get the same number of fish as you have people in your house, right? So this is some motivation to invent... Um, this, this is some motivation to invent what we now call the natural numbers, right? They're, they're super useful for counting things, right? So like one fish, two fish, three fish, four fish, five fish, six fish, right? Now these, these numbers... They, they're, they're nice. They represent how many fish you've caught so you can decide to feed your family. Good. Super useful. Um, and you made them up. You imagined them. They're imaginary. You just needed a system for knowing how many people you were trying to feed and matching that to how many fish you'd caught. Okay. Pretty reasonable. 
Then um, you, your friend decides to help you fish, and you realize that, that there's something you can do, and there's some rules you can learn, so that when your friend has some fish and you have some fish, you can combine those two numbers of fish, and you can know whether your total is enough to feed your family. Right? Um, so, suddenly, you have some motivation for inventing addition! Addition's great, right? Um, and high epitome. And anytime you add two of your numbers together, you get another one of your numbers. And that's, that's fantastic. Your number system is nice and complete. It has everything you need. If your friend has five fish and you have five fish, you have ten fish together. And those are all numbers that you know about. And then you get the idea that maybe you can subtract also. Right? My family needs 10 fish. I caught six fish. How many fish does my friend need to catch? And suddenly you're motivated to invent the opposite of addition. Right? And then somebody else takes over catching fish for you so that you can be a philosopher. Belongs to the light. Epitome, thanks for subscribing. I've just gotten back from Crypt of the Necro Dancer and a ninja attack and a super amazing wagon adventure. And I am incredibly sweaty, so I'm just going to hug you right here into the armpit. And let the warm, moist sweat wash over you. Thank you for your subscription, Epitome. Two months in a row. Welcome back to the Bearded Council. Give him a bunch of cookies. While our math philosopher, our, our imaginary math philosopher, keeps, keeps philosophizing. Right? So, um, you start to think about subtraction, and you think, I can subtract 10 minus 6. But what happens if I try to subtract 6 minus 10? None of my numbers make sense. None of my numbers make sense. And eventually you arrive at the conclusion that you can just invent numbers like 0 and negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3 and in some sense those consistently answer your question. Right? Suddenly you can subtract any two numbers and you get a number you know about. All you had to do was imagine more numbers. Negative numbers are also incredibly imaginary. Right? And they're very useful because they answer a question. Now, now we can subtract and we always get a number back that we have access to. Right? That's, now our numbers are complete again. Right? And, and by now you've expanded your fishing operation and you have hundreds of fishermen working for you. And as Lama woke up this morning, his new acquaintance was nowhere to be found. He searched around, but she was gone. None left of her. He only found a single thing in his house. A card with a ninja. We'll be back. So we've, we've established addition and subtraction. We've hired a bunch of new fishermen. But I have to go rescue my friend. From, that's the wrong button. From some ninjas. Oh, and we just beat that level, too. So we're going up a level. 120 ninjas.
That is still the wrong button. Ninja's all up in here trying to interrupt my math lesson. Thanks, Steven. Thanks for the warning about those ninjas. Okay, so where were we? Oh, um, you've suddenly hired now. Um, you, you've suddenly hired a bunch of fishermen, and they're doing the fishing for you. And you find that it's really useful to be able to multiply your numbers together. So if you expect a fisherman to catch 10 fish a day, you can figure out how many fish you catch with like six or seven or eight fishermen by inventing multiplication. And now multiplication works really, really splendidly with your whole number system. Anytime you multiply two of your numbers together, you get another number you already know about. Um, which, is, which is great, you know, even like you can even think of a consistent pattern for multiplying your negative numbers. And we're not going to go into the reasons that those rules work today, that's not, that's not what we're talking about, but there is a consistent pattern, right? Two, multi two negative numbers give you a positive number, a positive number and a negative number give you a negative number, and that's all consistent and that all works really well with the numbers that you have imagined to help you run your business. They're all imaginary, right? And how did you come up with them? Well, you had a question you wanted answered, and they were very convenient tools to answer them. And anytime you needed new numbers, you just made them up. Right? And, and addition, now, now at this point, you're spending a lot of your time on philosophy and, and much less of it on practical application. Get down here. Not fair if I have all the fun. And I should take a relaxing dance break after that hard ninja fight. A celebratory dance break sponsored by Arnosky. Thank you, sir. We will have a dance break and then we'll get back to our math lesson. I used to let my kids in middle school interrupt me this much. This is pretty much exactly how my class ran. If you're having a hard time focusing, you don't have enough ADD. <laughs> or something. I think, I assume is how this works. <laughs> or something. I can't believe those ninjas stole my cookie. Rude ninjas. Alright. Oh, limber up. Oh, focus the game so it knows that the input is for it. This thing's key is usually nearby. I'm surprised I haven't found it. Oh, it was shield. I, I did not read the scroll properly. Well, that was wasted.
I saw the bomb. I just stood. I just stepped on it anyway. I just stepped right on the bomb. <sighs> right on the bomb. Okay. Okay. Um. So. Um, where were we? We were talking about, you've just invented multiplication. And because you're a bit of a philosopher at this point, you think, hey, maybe multiplication should have an opposite like addition had an opposite. And you quickly realize that as you start dividing things, suddenly things aren't divisible by each other. Um, just like your positive numbers weren't enough to support subtraction. You had to invent negative numbers, so you had answers to all of your questions. As soon as you invent division which doesn't have a plain, terrible. whoa, terrible, which doesn't have an easy symbol on the, on the keyboard, so we're going to use a slash to notate division, you, you discover that suddenly you don't have answers to some of your questions. Like 9 divided by 3 works great, but 7 divided by 3 doesn't work very well at all. Right, and at this point you have now invented the rational numbers, and getting a little bit lazy, you decide to just say the answer to 7 divided by 3 is 7 thirds, which is just 7 divided by 3, and that's fine. That's fine. That's a neat, that's a fine way to represent a number. Totally, totally fine. Um, you know, and, and you learn some properties of these things, like, you know, 6 doesn't divide evenly by 4, but that is the same as how 3 doesn't divide evenly by 2, and you can spend a little bit of time with these numbers, and you discover that you have a whole new set of numbers, and they are called the rational numbers, right? And these, um, you discover if you put your numbers on a number line, you can fit these in between them, and you learn all the rules about what fits in between what, and you can tell which rational numbers are bigger than which other ones, and everything's nice and consistent and wonderful and works again. Okay? Um, and where have all these numbers come from? Aside from the very first set, which you could arguably say represented actual fish. The rest of these numbers were just invented because we didn't have answers to problems. And, you know, like the negative numbers came because we couldn't answer some of our subtraction problems. And the division, the, the rational numbers came because we couldn't answer some of our division problems. And we just imagined new numbers to be the answers. Just imagined them. Right? Now, um, how much further can we take this? Well, multiplying is like adding repeatedly. What if I decide I want to multiply repeatedly? Well, I can do that, right? I can do, I can do, uh, six times six times six, and I can, I can say, well, that's, that's six repeatedly multiplied three times. And I can invent a new operation, and we're going to represent it on the computer keyboard with this little carrot. Uh, it's not exactly how we write it when we handwrite our math, but that's fine. We've invented a new operation. And this, again, like, when we invent this operation, everything works. It's great. This operation works really nicely with the number system we have. All of the numbers we have work. They give numbers. We know what they are. And then we start to wonder about, well, what if, what if I do one of these rational numbers in my exponent. That's okay. That's okay. We can do that. We sort that out. You know, we figured out how to do square roots. And then, then one of your students, at this point I'm sure you're a teacher because you've been philosophizing about math forever and you're inventing all of it. And other people are like, who's this smart guy? Um, and then one of your students says, well, what about this? Get down here. Not fair if I have all the fun. And after our hero defeated the kidnappers, his love was still gone. He only knew her for one evening, but he lost his heart. While searching for his love, his heart, it started beating like a drum. And there was nothing he could do. Taking some poetic license here, Stephen. Um, there was nothing he could do but dance out his pain.
I miss her so much. Maybe we'll find her in zone one. Couldn't escape. I miss my cookie now. This story has ah chest. Was this sell one of your items? Yeah, we don't want gold. Oh no, I got a spear? When did I pick up a spear? That was a terrible choice. What does this do? Yeah. That was a bad choice too. Tell me the lights come back on. No! That shrine was the worst! It's a whip. When there's a whip, there's a way. This is so awful. I cannot express the awfulness. I mean, I'm bad at this game when I have the right weapons. And the light's on. I didn't find my cookie. She's gone. Oh, can we check how far to the adventure we are? I think we're probably there. Um, yeah, I think we, we have very much rolled over the next adventure. But we're so close to the end of math that I just want to finish math because we're really close to the end. We're going to wrap this up and then we're going to go on an adventure. So, all right, um, so we were, we were here and we had just thought, well, what about, what if I do a negative number and a fraction with my new exponent operation? And it quickly becomes very clear that the answer is not in our number system. It's not on our number line, right? Um, you know, up to, up to this point, We've been able to map all of our numbers on this line. Um, and, you know, we put zero in the middle, and we put the negative numbers going this way, and we put the positive numbers going this way, and we put the rational numbers in between, and everything has worked really well. But there are no numbers on this entire number line that answer this question. There are no two numbers that when you multiply them together, you get a negative number. So what have we done? Every single time we had this problem, 
We just imagine new numbers. So we just make up a new number, right? The same thing we've done literally every time. And we just say, well, okay, this number is called I. Good. Where does it go on the number line? Well, the number line's kind of full. So let's just put it here. That'll be I right there. And that'll be negative I. Done. We've done literally the same thing we did every time we had a question we couldn't answer. We just made up new numbers that answered it. We stuck them on our number line diagram. And for some reason, this one's the imaginary one. And none of the rest of them are, the rest of them are real. This is the dumbest naming scheme for numbers possible at all. They're all imaginary or they're all real. You don't get to just decide arbitrarily that for some reason this one is less real than the rest. It is the worst name for a number. That's just a number. It doesn't happen to fit on the number line. But how is this any less real than all the other stuff we made up? This is my diatribe on imaginary numbers. So that's, um, I go over that with seventh graders and they love it. That's their, um, like, they're like, oh, this all makes sense. It's great. Um, right. So we need to go on another adventure. Uh, this one will be brought to you by Steven. Let's start our very historically accurate adventure starring Steven. Steven was a fine gentleman with short black hair. Oh no. On a long and historically accurate adventure, he desperately searched for his love. He searched and searched and searched. But he only found more ninjas in his journey. And he wanted revenge for her. That we will do that. Uh, we need to edit the... I hit spacebar, which accepted it, which wasn't what we meant to do. This is the cookie. She was a fair lady with sweet shades. They traveled in their trusty wagon. Um, I think the fantasy is probably fitting for our fairy tale story of, of a man who loved a cookie. They set off into the forest. The cookie became ill with yellow fever. Seeing some animals in an upcoming clearing, they hurried ahead. They needed to stock up for food on the long journey. This gun. We get no food. Oh, this gun is so bad. You've been here for an hour now, Steve, and you haven't seen a single second of FTL? Well, as you'd imagine, we're on the final phase of the boss fight. A posse of bandits interrupted the hunt. A machine gun armed bandit wagon arrived. Mm -hmm. 
This gun is actively terrible. Like, it is literally the worst thing possible. The cookie recovered from yellow fever. The magic wand seemed to be running low on magic. What's wrong with it? The cookie left the wagon and found some edible mushrooms. Om nom 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 nom. I'm the cookie and I'm eating mushrooms. Because that's normal. The cookie ate one of the mushrooms on the way back. The cookie battled her inner demons. I'm holding down the button. This is, like, it's running out of magic. This is as fast as it fires. In this, like, random pattern. Painful memories. Bound it around her head. Hours later, the cookie returned to reality and the wagon. The magic wand recharged. They reached a river crossing. The cookie had the brilliant idea to try to jump over the river. Alternatively, they could ford it. They got a running start and leapt from the top of a ledge. They only made it halfway across the river. They landed in the middle of some rapids. Painful memories, is that like when I bit her? Ah! Don't die in the rapids, pay attention! Something, something, something rocks. Really? Okay. Finally, they reached the other side of the river. They entered into the Great Plains. They came across a large herd of buffalo. Their gun was actively terrible at surviving buffalo herds. A bison rammed into Steven and pulverized his internal organs. Help me, shotgun! You're my only hope! Some angry buffalo charged the wagon! A buffalo smashed into Astral Storm, causing massive internal bleeding and a slow, painful death. The cookie's still alive, though! The fur trader offered the cookie supplies in exchange for animal hides. There was a tornado. The wagon was picked up by the tornado. along with some buffalo. Don't die, Cookie! The front wheel of the wagon fell off! The wagon was stuck! The cookie left the wagon to fetch the wheels. The first wheel rolled into a camp filled with bandits. A bullet hit the cookie in her head, killing her. In, in case you forgot, on a long historical accurate adventure, he desperately searched for his love. He searched and searched and searched, but he only found more ninjas in his journey, and he wanted revenge for her. So I will have my revenge for Cookie. For Cookie!
Oh, oh, the ninjas beat me. Terrible, terrible. The ninjas beat me. Nah, and I'm glad that watching a man beat up ninjas has made you feel better. That is, that is the goal. Okay, so we're done with adventures. And I haven't added these ninjas. We're actually that close to the next adventure. And dance fights and dances and ninjas and adventures. And cookies. And mathematical musings. And it's time for more FTL. I think. And we got intruders. Intruder alert. Oh, we got mind control that we can't can't cope with. No oxygen for you. When does mind control wear off? Hopefully soon. No! Oh no, my O2 though. Good mercy. Back to piloting. Go. This is where we die. We have zero dodge. Mind control now! Give me my guy back. The missiles got through! We didn't get it punched to death! Oh no. We gotta go. We gotta retrieve our guys. And go. There's no repairs left. I mean, we could jump to the base and not immediately explode, but we can't repair our hull. However, our imminent death is delayed because intruders fight them off with your ninja skills, Llama! Thanks, Arnoski. I will fight off the intruders with my ninja skills. While our ship explodes around me. But I, I do need to fight these ninjas off.
Get out of my ship, ninjas. I may not be able to beat the mothership, but I can beat you. Um, so, flying away lets us repair a little. But other than that, it doesn't actually help, right? Because we just come back into the same fight. He gets his Zoltan shield back. And we have two hull. Oh no! I didn't... I didn't switch the screen back so you could watch all the missiles hit us. I, uh... I'm a terrible showman. And you missed the climax because I am bad at making the screen show the right thing. Uh, we lost. We lost. Flutter Dash has uh, purchased another math lesson with, with the following text. For your next math lesson, can you explain tensors and multilinear maps? Or, you know, something else entirely of your own choice. Um, I, I would need to do a little brushing up before I did tensors and multilinear maps. By which I mean study the topic at all. <laughs> um, but we could do... We could do something else entirely of my own choice. Let's see, what can we, what can we do off the cuff? What's an interesting, what's an interesting thing about math? While we watch our ship explode. Um, that's about where you went, well, enough math for this life, yeah. What level's my education, Dakon? Um, I have a bachelor's degree in math. Um, I don't remember doing tensors, at least not by that name, but it's been a really long time. I mean, I, like, the word is familiar, um, but I don't, I don't remember studying it. Um, oh, we could do paradoxes. That's a good idea, Rasmuffin. That's a math topic. We could talk about, we could talk about Goodle. I don't actually know how to pronounce his name properly. Something like that. Um, we could talk about, there's a great book that if you like math at all, you should get and read. It's um, mind-bogglingly awesome. It's called uh, Godel Escher Bach, An Eternal Golden Braid by Douglas Hofstetter. And you should totally read it. Um, all right, let's, let's kill the music so I can think. Are we gonna do... Um, Let's do, let's talk about infinity briefly. This is something that I always, like always was super interesting to my students. Um, oh, no, I know a good one. I know a good one. This is great. Um, I should probably ask chat not to spoil this. Like some of you will know the answer, I'm sure. Um, because some of you have seen this before. But if that is you, please kindly don't spoil it for everyone else. Um, and let's talk about, like, infinity is super weird, first of all. There, there are people who will still argue with me when I say things like this. If you repeat an infinite sequence of nines, 
that is actually equal to 1. There is no difference between those two values. There are people who will argue and say, no, they're not the same. This one is smaller than 1 because it's all 9s. Um, those people are wrong, provably, demonstrably, logically wrong. Uh, these two things are equal, and they're equal because infinity is weird. Um, right, so infinity is, it, it does bizarre things like make these two things equal. Well, here's another bizarre thing it does. What do you get if you add up all of the natural numbers? Whoa, not dollar sign. If you add them up all the way to infinity, what do you get? Now, your first impulse is to add up a few of them and look for a pattern, right? If I add up 100 of them, I get a pretty big number. If I add up 1,000 of them, I get an even bigger number. If I add up 10,000 of them, I get an even bigger number. So the answer should be maybe infinity? Maybe? Maybe that makes sense? Right? Um, it's not. And we're not going to spoil the answer for a second. This, I, a poor 8th grader, a poor 8th grader last year hated me for this. Um, because we're going to demonstrate that this does have an answer. The answer is, in fact, finite, and the answer is, in fact, negative? Yeah. Uh, it's this. Negative 1 twelfth. You can't get a negative number by adding a bunch of positive numbers. You can't do it. That's ridiculous. Infinity's weird. Infinity is weird. Right? Um, so, there are larger and smaller amounts of infinity for his blade. That is absolutely true. But infinity plus one is infinity. Like, those are the same... Those are the same amount of infinity. Which... We could do that real quick. If you have... No, we're not going to do that. We're going to we're going to stick to this. We're going to finish this out, and then we're going to be done. So, so yeah. So negative a twelfth. No, that doesn't make any sense. You're right. It doesn't make any sense. But it's true. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to say, what if you do this? What if what if you do one of these? Right. Just. 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. What if you do that? Um, well, well, what you do is, I mean, it, it, you, could, you could say, look, if I stop after one number, it's 1. And if I stop after two numbers, it's 0. And if I stop after three numbers, it's 1. And so it's either 1 or 0, depending on when you stop. But the dot, dot, dots mean you don't stop, right? So it's not, it can't be 1, it can't be 0. It can't be either of those, because those depend on there being an odd number or an even number, and an infinity is not odd and not even, because you'd have to stop to be odd or even. Right, so what, what do we do about this? Well, um, you can take, if you take this number and you add it to itself, right? Um, yeah, you can't find the limit, Thuy. You can't find the limit because it diverges. Right? It doesn't converge to a number. But we're not finding the limit. We're finding the sum. And there is a, there's a subtle difference there. Um, now, you can just, like, for the, sake of, for the sake of speed, you can just argue, well, it's one half because it's in between zero and one. That's not super convincing, though. That's not super convincing, though. But what if, what if we do instead? What if we add this number to itself, but offset the addition a little bit? like this. It becomes very clear that everything except for the very leading one cancels out and we just get one. So two of this makes one, so one of this is a half. Which there are probably, like if you're, if you're gonna be really strict and rigorous, we have to be a little more careful than just adding things like that. I know that. Please don't lose respect for me because I'm not being more strict and rigorous. This is, after all, an impromptu math lesson for a video game audience, not a bunch of PhDs. So we're going we're gonna to take a little bit of liberty here. 
um, a little bit of liberty here. But we're going to say that this argument is reasonable enough. Right? We can cancel everything out. This plus itself equals one. What number plus itself equals one? One half. Right? Um, and again, the reason is that infinity is weird. Right? So, um, so that's, there's, we're going to, we're going to leave that around and we're going to give that a name. Um, we're going to call that sequence like maybe S. This is like, there are more rigorous ways to prove this. That reasoning isn't it, but like it, it does exist. Um, okay. So now next, next we're going to do a similar trick with this one. We're going to take all the numbers and we're going to alternate adding or subtracting them. Right? We want to know what that equals. Okay. Um, and we're going to do a similar trick. We're going to take it and we're going to offset and we're going to add it to itself. Right? We're going to do, we're going to do the same offset trick that is, is as a matter of rigorous fact, quite unjustified, but that's fine. Um, so we have two of whatever this is, right? And that is going to equal, well, one minus one plus one minus one. Oh, oh. Okay, so, so this thing then would have to be, since it's half of a half, since two of it make a half, it would have to be a quarter. Okay. So 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5, if we add all those up to infinity, right? if you ever stop, you're going to get a different answer. But if you add, if you add to infinity, you're going to get 1 fourth. Okay? Okay. We are most of the way there. We are most of the way there. Now, I need to, I need to remember. I haven't done this in a while. And we're, we're going off the cuff here. I need to remember exactly the shenanigans required to get the next step. Because we're going to do... We're going to do some shenanigans. Okay, so um, we are going to take, oh, let's call that one, let's call that one Olaf. Um, right, and we're going to take, we're going to take Olaf and we're going to add him, um, do we subtract him? What do we do? There's something. Oh, we're just going to add, we're going to call this one. This one up here needs a name. Um, we're going to call him Jeff. Um, so if we take, um, if we take Olaf plus Jeff, we get one, one, right? We get minus 2 plus 2, and we get minus 3, or we get plus 3, and we get minus 3, and we get, mm, oh no, this is plus, just kidding, one of these is all pluses, and the other one alternates, minus 3 plus 3, this one's minus 4, and this one's plus 4, right, and so you can see, like, Every other thing cancels out. Right? Every other thing cancels out here. And so we end up getting, well, 2 plus 0 plus 6 plus 0 plus 10. I did this wrong. Hang on. We're going to subtract them. Subtracting them works better. We're going to do Jeff minus Olaf. See, this is the part where if I had, if I had thought about this for 10 seconds before we started, I would have remembered this trick. We're going to do Jeff minus Olaf. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to move Olaf down below Jeff, and we're going to subtract everything. Right? Um, so we're going to get 0 plus 4 plus 0 plus 8. This is going to work a lot better. So Jeff minus Olaf, if we put in all the dot, dot, dots and go on forever, well, this is obviously 
four times Jeff, right? Jeff minus Olaf equals four times Jeff. Well, that's great because we know exactly what Olaf is. Olaf is one fourth. So Jeff minus one fourth equals four times Jeff. And there's only one thing that Jeff could possibly be. Well, if we subtract Jeff from both sides, we get negative one fourth equals three times Jeff. So Jeff must obviously be equal to, well, one twelfth. Negative, negative one twelfth. So if you add up all of the positive numbers, just add all the positive numbers together, you get negative one twelfth when you add to infinity. Because infinity is weird. And here's the weirder thing about this. And I don't know a lot of these details. So you, the, the research is left for you to do. But this result is physically verifi verifiable. I think it shows up... Don't, don't quote me on this. I may be wrong here. I think it shows up in the Casimir effect. Like some of the math that you do to work out how the Casimir effect works involves an infinite sum and this negative one twelfth result is experimentally verifiable. This is like legitimately true and even has some physical ramifications in physics. So there you go. Infinity's weird and does weird things to your math. Um, now, yeah, I mean, we did, we did some stuff that you can't actually cancel like that, but there are more mathematically rigorous ways to go around that proof. That's just the most intuitive way to kind of show some sort of reasoning. It's not super mathematically rigorous. Don't take that and write a PhD paper and think you won't get laughed out of the room. Um, but for like a casual audience, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. It's not the Casimir effect. Am I thinking of the wrong thing? All right. Well, there is some physical. I don't know exactly what it is, but there is that. That is like experimentally verifiable. It shows up in the physics. So, you know, Infinity's weird. Hey, let's start a new game of FTL for 45 minutes. We could, yeah. I mean, we are like one ninja attack away from an adventure. Um, good. FTL speedrun? That's not, that's not at all how we play FTL around here. 45 minutes of FTL, though. We're gonna have to lose really fast. Ew. Ew, don't random me that garbage ship. Um, what ships don't we have unlocked? Do we want to unlock more crystal variations? We don't have any victories with this one either. I want to take the Federation Cruiser out. Let's unlock Federation Cruiser B. Complete two for layout B. Uh, use your crew in four special blue event choices by Sector 5. Get to Sector 5 without upgrading your weapon system. We can do that. We're going to get to Sector 5, and we're not going to upgrade our weapon system. Um, let me reset all of the... 
um, challenges for this new run. Did I get them all? We're gonna try. We're gonna try for um, not upgrading our weapon system at all. Hi, Archie White. Oh, I didn't rename the ship. Oh, oh, the Osprey. Boring. We can rename the crew still, though. That's a thing. This crew will be led by the mighty human Brass Muffin. His loyal co sidekick, Kaida Geralt. The indomitable rock, Liam Clan. And the mighty NG, Rage 8. Good night, Archie. Yeah, you can upgrade the cannon. You just can't upgrade the weapons. The weapons. Um, so once again, like if you unlock any challenges in the next 45 minutes or whatever, the next time we play FTL, which could be a few weeks, uh, we'll keep those challenges unlocked. They'll, they'll last as long as this run lasts. Reject their offer. I will not regret anything. That's ridiculous. Ha! Huh. You will not laser my ship. It isn't fair if I have all the fun. You can't have slacking crew, no crew members. Make them breathe space if they can't skill stuff. Still kill stuff. Can't read good today. Make them breathe space if they can't kill stuff. And go on a train ride on the plains. Uh, Arnoski has unlocked the incentive program. And he added just a little extra so we could go on a super amazing wagon adventure. While these guys breathe space. Thank you, Steven. Heroes live alone. And because you live alone, you don't have engineers. And because you don't have engineers, you can't take it on yourself to upgrade the ship. So yeah, that happened 200 letter limit. Um, okay. So we are heroes and loners who don't want to avoid our warranty. And still going on a super amazing wagon adventure. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like because of the delay and things... This adventure should be unlocked by both Ernoski and Steven, and we'll just pick one person from the patron Patreon list to go with them, and that's going to be Asker Ala. So Steven is a fine gentleman with a big mustache. Ernoski is a fair lady with short black hair, and Asker Ala is a fine gentleman with short black hair. Um, Arnoski specifically requested their trusty wagon, the Coal Fired. And we're going to set off into the forest. Steven got space rabies again. People named Steven are very susceptible to space rabies.
A posse of bandits interrupted the hunt. Get him. Oh no! Steven, don't play to death on a bullet after- Oh. Why am I so bad at video games? A machine gun on the bandit wagon arrived. Ow. I'll give you those. Pascal left the wagon and found some edible mushrooms. Stupid space rabies. Ascarala ate one of the mushrooms on the way back to the wagon. He felt great. Yay! Ascarala battled his inner demons. He battled them with smoke. I hate this gun so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, this gun! We're just gonna put smoke everywhere and hope that it hits things. Hey, that one did. Come on, painful memories! Get rocket launcher! Possibly the only thing worse against painful memories. Hours later, Askarala returned to the wagon. Aronofsky was like, hey, maybe we could jump over this river in a train pulled by an ox. Because history. To space! A gust of air pulled them up into low Earth orbit. Because that is absolutely how orbit works. And meteor showers are absolutely this dense. That's how meteors work. They came across a strange machine. The strange machine was like really hard to dodge and stuff. Because stupid train. Stupid train. Bullets that go in a straight line! My one weakness! The wagon fell out of orbit. It's the Back to the Future train? Okay, that's fair. By chance they landed in the same river they had jumped over days before. They entered into the Great Plains. They came across a large herd of buffalo. And as he was crushed by a bison. This gun is so bad at Buffalo! Buffalo, 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 Buffalo! I don't know if I said the right number, I wasn't counting. Oh my gosh, give me that health. Buffalo, get out of the way! Yeah! Victory! Blow up the buffalo! Yay! Buffalo! Oh, seriously? Okay, well, net net zero health is, is fine.
Some angry buffalo charged the wagon. No! No! Crushed by a bison! Disaster. The train is impossible. That thing is so hard. Oh my gosh. Try and play this game as the train. It is not easy. We've seen a dinosaur once, Arnowski. I don't know how to unlock it, though. I don't know how to get that... The... Like, I thought we had seen a dinosaur, and then I lost instead of beating it. Um, but I have no idea how to get the unlock. Next math time thing, calculate the chance to land in the same river rigorously. Um, I mean, we'd have to make a lot of assumptions. But all we would need is your, like, we would need the orbital height. I mean, the chance, the chance is really easy. You take the width of the river and the circumference of the planet, and if you assume you land in a random location, you just divide the width of the river by the circumference of the planet. That's not hard at all. Right? My bonus goal is broken. I have no idea when the next one is. Hey, quit that, you. No weapons. Please forward this money toward the Galactic Peace Treaty Program set up by the Federation minutes before the rebellion that forbids stores to sell military-grade weapons to spaceships in space war. <laughs> Steven! <laughs> Steven, why do you just only want me to lose? That's self-sufficient, right? Okay. Your, your uh, money is forwarded to the Galactic Peace Treaty Program. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> well, that, that was rigorous given our assumptions. What assumptions do you want me to make, Astral Storm? Like, if I make the assumption that we land in a random location, then dividing the circumference of the Earth by the radius of the river, or by the width of the river, is exactly right. Right? I mean, we need to make... We could probably make much better assumptions, but there would be way too many. I mean, 0%. The chance is 0%, because you can't jump a train to space. Was that rigorous? Like, I don't... I don't know if I understand what you mean. It's right, but I didn't prove it? I mean, that's how, like, of all the random locations, the width of the river are in the river, and all the rest aren't. And then that's how probability works. The, the definition of proof that I was given, um, the, the best working definition of proof that I've heard, is enough to convince an expert... And I feel like that argument would convince an expert because they know the underlying theorems and they wouldn't make me repeat all of them unless I was doing some really pedantic homework. Right? I should have let the ship fill up with oxygen. Start from basic axioms? That sounds like really pedantic, obnoxious homework. Is what that sounds like. Oh good, my weapons! That's exactly the system we didn't need right now.
Good mercy. There you go. Uh, go help us with the fires. You know, we need shields and stuff. This fight. Sweet mercy. Brass Muffin, get in the med bay now! Um. The idiot in charge of the ship. Did not power the O2 enough in the last sector. Did we make it? <sighs> I totally just killed Rasmuffin. Um. Because I didn't fill the ship up before jumping. Because I was too distracted. Where's the fire? Fire in the O2. That's bad. Fire in the weapons. We can get rid of that by opening the doors. What happens if the thing is over before we get through Sector 1? Uh, we'll start the next run with the same challenges. If I am that terrible at this game, uh, we'll, we'll start the next sector with the same challenges. I guess Kyder Geralt's our new... Uh, New pilot. Please get the FTL drive charged. We need to get out of here. Off we go. Uh, get the storage cache. I can make it up to you. How's the long war going? Uh, Crazy Meldred shirt is very, very nearly out of the med bay, finally. Or maybe is out of the med bay. It's it's close. We're about to get to use Crazy Meldred shirt to win more missions. Um, long war is going pretty well. I made some dumb moves while I was sick last week. But we, we just deleted those from the timeline and it was fine. Hi, Scritches. Let's hit that one and then the store. Of course it's the sun. Of course it is. What's not how this works, Steven? You don't leave the O2 on and wait till the room refills during the fight? Was that, did I leave the O2 on during that fight? I totally didn't mean to. Oh, I should be hitting the drone. Not the, not the weapons. What assumptions have to be met to land in the same river? Like, we could, we could do the orbital mechanics problem. And we could calculate... We could calculate, like... Some description of the initial conditions to land in the river. Um, I'd have to do a lot of research. To be ready to do that, because I'm not... Super well versed in orbital mechanics. Do you guys not have? Yeah. Stupid fire doing hull damage.
because because KSP Aronofsky, the reason I'm not super well versed in it is because KSP does all the math for you and I never bothered to learn the equations. <gasps> no peace treaty oh these guys have black market weapons and I want them and I can't have them oh no no oh no it's not it's only halfway unlocked we could buy that flak one Should we buy that flak one? We can't upgrade our weapon system until sector five. But that only takes two power. So we can't power it with our current weapon system. The question is, is that better than just upgrading this thing at the store with the money since we can't upgrade the weapon systems until Sector 5? Are we going to carry around a useless flak from the very first store for a billion years? Or are we just going to upgrade the artillery beam and artillery beam things? Because we could put this, like, we could put this way cranked up. I knew if I delayed long enough. Aronofsky says, peace treaty is hereby established. There you go. What's it called? It's called self-sufficient. I guess we'll have to fend for ourselves since these guys won't sell us weapons. Alright, so this is what we're doing here. I needed to stall for a little bit, because I think, like, if I had hurried and snatched it up and then Aronofsky's donation had come through, I would have felt really bad. Bonus goal is broken. Yep. Uh, we ran out as, like, it's, because I hacked together this overlay, it's made of really hacky programming, and there's a finite number of bonus goals in sequence. Instead of, like, repeating the same thing over and over, it goes through them in sequence, and we ran out because we did so many today. <laughs> uh, Burst Laser 2 for life. Burst Laser 2 is actually not worse than... It's one second larger charge time than Flak, but for that one second better charge time, we get more accuracy. It's the same number of shots. So it's really, like... That wasn't a huge loss. Yeah, the only thing, so like, when it, when it says we can't buy weapons, we can't buy anything from a box that says weapons at the top at a store. That's what it means. We can buy anything else. Why did I do something like that? Originally, the reason I did something like that, Anthony, is because originally that was used for the equipment upgrades for my studio, which was a finite list of things, and it did go sequentially from one to the next to the next to the next until we ran out, and then I repurposed it for the bonus goal and didn't rewrite it. That's why. I mean, there's, 
It's not a good reason, but it's a reason. <laughs> it's still really shoddy programming, but really shoddy programming is, is the programming I know how to do. Yay! All right, Rillip, have fun being an adult. It's a single line of code? Well, it would be a single line of code if I had written that well. That's my counter argument. <laughs> you haven't seen my code. You don't know how many lines it would take to fix this. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at everything. <laughs> oh, oxygen! Thank you, Inoski, thank you. I am the worst at cheating. Yes, do not, do not ever look at any code I wrote. No. This is like, like I write code the easiest way for a really bad programmer to make the stupid thing work right now really fast. With no thought for the future and like extensibility, no, no. It is, it is ugly and it will give you nightmares. However, if you're ever teaching a programming class and you need some examples of really bad code for people to critique so that they can learn what not to do, I will gladly give you copies of all my stuff. Gladly give you copies of all my stuff. Uh, it's, it's in JavaScript and HTML and CSS is all how all this stuff works. Probably need to get going toward the exit. I'm a little worried. Like, we can spend some time circling the drain like this. Um, and I don't want to, like, if I spend a lot of time jumping around up here, this will sneak up on me. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, maybe? No, Earth and Lady, JavaScript is not hard. That's why I can do it. That doesn't mean I do it well or correctly or follow good programming practices. It means it's easy enough for me to slap together really, really badly. But look, all this stuff works, kind of. At least I know enough to know I'm terrible at this. That's progress. We probably need to keep hitting the... They're gonna repair that. We should switch back and forth between the piloting and the engines to keep the FTL delayed. Which is sad, because that means we just have to keep letting the stupid missiles hit us. Oh, good! Good work, Beam! You took out the missiles. At least I'm not delusional. You dispute that? Okay, fair enough. I'm not delusional about my programming ability. Like, in that very specific realm, there's no delusion. 
That's fair. This is the part where we wait for the oxygen. Okay. Prepare to die. We're prepared. Prepare to have your weapons disabled. Um, prepare to fight a rock man? No. Okay. Med Bay, where the medicine is. And that one last rank in this, taking it down from 30 to 20 seconds, is so strong. I can't wait to get that last rank. This is actually going to be a pretty hard achievement to get, I think. Am I accepting tips? Yes. Misplaced sanity. Um, are, are you telling? Yes. Oh, Steven's, Steven's got the right of it. Any kind of tip you want, you let me know. Um, please don't be offended if I don't follow your tips, though, because sometimes I like to be stupid on purpose. Sometimes we do things because they're fun, not because they're right. Why hard? It gives you much more scrap to put into shielding. Did I start on hard? Are we on, where do we see that? Are we on hard? No, we're on easy. We're on easy. We need all the scrap for our shields. Mmm. Yeah, misplaced sanity, that is an excellent point. Engines are better than shields. Some of the stupidity is legitimate, white fluid, but there are times when I say, I know this is wrong, but I'm doing it anyway. Both, both of these, there's room in the world for both of these things. There is room in the world for both of these things. Ooh. Do we go to the store? Store, jump, yeah. Yes, we do. Because I want to upgrade the shields. The crew is better in engine than shields, but the shield... Yeah, upgrading the shields is super important. Like, is, is that what you mean, as far as upgrades go? Um, we are loners. And self-sufficient... Yeah, okay. We can't hire... This... We can't do higher crew. Um, we could do... Those are all terrible. We could do mind control here? We probably don't do mind control here. We probably repair the ship a little. And then upgrade the shields. Oh no! Are we heroes? We're heroes. Oh, disaster. We just double dove. We have to double dive the exit because of heroism. That might be run ending. We might we might just die here. There you go. Oh, thanks. Map? 
Great. Great. Disaster. Ew! Nebula- but I needed that power to live! Oh, Nebula. Oh, Nebula, you monster. Um, okay. We're just jumping. We can't- we can't beat this guy. I eh, maybe we can beat this guy. Is it worth beating this guy? All we get is one fuel. It's not worth one fuel. We're just gonna jump. We're gonna leave the power in the engines and we're just gonna jump. Uh, it's not exactly how probability works, misplaced sanity, but I mean the argument is still reasonable. Oh, he doesn't have enough power for his. There is no reason to even repair these shields. Get back in there. I didn't see that his gun wasn't on. Backup repair team, go! Power the med bay. Don't unpower the dodge. Power the med bay. Get in the med bay. Duh. Repair the shields. Oh, oxygen, please. No! Oh! Ping, ping, miss! Stupid's incentive program. Work harder. Work harder, pilot. Go swap into piloting. You're gonna charge the jump. Get to the med bay. Get to the med bay. We're out. We made it. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Woo! Oh, we didn't make it. We didn't make it. Run, Liam Clan. Run? Uh, the, the distress plus oxygen was, uh, pretty debilitating there. I should have, you remember when I was like, oh, we could probably fight this ship? Do you remember that? And I thought, all we get is one fuel, it's not worth it, we should run. The other thing we get is our ship full of oxygen. Which I should have, I should have calculated that. I should have weighed that into the risk-reward scenario. <laughs> Should have weighed that in. If we get slug life, this run is over. Like, it just, we can't win with two crew.
Oh, great. Perfect. When is D&D? &D? Tomorrow night. Am I caught up on YouTube? I don't think I caught up on YouTube ever. And D&D &D's tomorrow night. Oops. Stop putting my ship on fire, stupid lasers. And your fire. I don't have time to fix fire. Quit breaking my weapons so far away and have to run through the fire to get there. Oh no, my oxygen! I'm a cheater! Really? Asteroid field, that's how you're gonna do me? Uh, there's no fuel in that offer. We do not accept. Uh, okay, turn on the oxygen, turn on the dork control. Repair the engines. Um... Most of the time this early in the game, the fights are short enough that the O2 thing just slows us down, but most of the time isn't all the time, and I really should follow that. Just bad at remembering. Have I played this game much? We we play quite a bit of it. I have I have a hundred hours. How many hours do I have? I have two hundred ninety nine hours. Um, but I play on easy with all these self imposed challenges. So I don't know, like, I don't know hard mode very well, and I don't know the intricacies of the game, because we had difficulty this way instead of, like, actual difficulty in the game. So I, I wouldn't say, like, even for all my experience, I wouldn't say I'm good at it. But I have played it a lot. The groaning of your mangled ship fills you with fear and determination. Uh... We don't have enough money to go to a store yet. Gross. Gross. Well, uh, that's probably the run. That is probably the run. Uh, why do I prefer the self-imposed difficulty? Just because, like, this is the thing we do on the weekends on this stream. Um, you know, it's 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 part of our tradition and our... Like, we, we don't always play FTL, but we do always have, like, stuff for people to unlock. And it's sort of... I mean, there's, it's, it's not that it's my preference for a way to play this game. It's just the only time I play it on stream, we have this stuff up. Celine, um, Celine, thank you. Um, Celine just sent fifty dollars and one cent, and it says, "Now my Christmas list is complete. Have a merry, merry Christmas, you, Kriya, Fuzzy, and the misses. Thank you, Celine. Appreciate that. Love you, man." Um, I wonder if we accept this offer because they're going to fly away. They're out of piloting, repairing their systems. Maybe we just try and kill them. Yeah, you guys get to breathe again. Huzzah. Mathematical musings? Yeah, we've done that like three times today, VXCom. 
Um, I just talk about something I find fascinating that's mathematically related. We get some Microsoft Paint out. It's ridiculous, but seems to be popular, so we're going to leave it on the menu. No matter if the bonus goal is broken or not, that's a wagon adventure. Celine, would you like us to go on a super amazing wagon adventure? If you want one, we will do it. So brave, a missile in the weapons. They weren't going to missile our weapons. The chances of them hitting exactly the weapon system was... This run's already doomed, so we gotta take some risks. That's really, that's really the only explanation that is not ridiculous, is like, we're doing so badly, if we don't take every risk possible to get scrap, we're just gonna lose. I think. Um, all right, we are gonna do a super amazing wagon adventure for Celine. Absolutely. Ellie Garrett, I'm glad you are filled with determination for the week to come. We will see you next weekend. Thanks for being here, man. Um, um, wagon adventure. I can't brain good right now. I'm a little, I'm a little fried from today. Maybe I wasn't 100% healthy. Maybe I wasn't all the way better. Um, but let's go on this super amazing wagon adventure to close out today's broadcast. Because we have unlocked an adventure. And I will get bigger and take up more of the screen so that you can't see the enemies we're fighting. And let's go on this super amazing wagon. Has anyone ever told me that I look like Joel from Being as an Ocean? No. Well, I mean, you have. Now. One person has. I, I don't know that show. I need to look it up. The sheer historical accuracy of this amazing wagon adventure fills you with determination. Celine! I don't know why I put too many E's in there. So, Celine. N with an N. It has an N in it. You can spell. Come on. Was a fine gentleman. With short black hair. Um, who's next? R Fry. Was a fair lady. With short brown hair and Kurt Sune. Was a fine gentleman with short black hair. I should fill the other half of the screen with Hollow Lama. We can have him dancing over there. He doesn't have enough pixels to be this big. We need a new Hollow Llama that's bigger. Because Hololama has, like, not very many pixels. I don't know what I did with that file, either. I might have lost it when I changed computers. I gotta find that thing. We haven't, we haven't seen Hololama in a long time. <laughs> Celine got spotted fever. You make me a new Hollow Llama? Alright, white flute. Do you have footage to use? Do I need to dance again? Do we need to, like, prepare? And uh, Celine coughed up blood and died from this guy's smell! Stupid, I am so bad at pay attention to the game. Pay attention. Stop getting people killed. A posse of bandits interrupted the hunt.
What is this game? It's Super Amazing Wagon Adventure Turbo! And it is so historically accurate and super amazing. It's the best game this place, Sanity. This is, we go on an adventure. Um, every once in a while. While we're doing the, uh, the weekend Java thing. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at dodging bullets! Get your historically accurate rocket launcher out and kill these clowns. A machine gun on bandit wagon arrived and ate some rockets. Our friend left the wagon to look for wild berries. Come on, I think that's like a super fair question. Uh, Miss Play Sanity's new here, and uh, wanted to know what's going on. I think that's like like a totally reasonable question. Hell, squirrels! Our friend ran back to the wagon because squirrels are scary. Scary. River crossing. You know the best way to get across a river? Jump. Yes, we jumped to space! Victory! To space! Low Earth Orbit. Oh, those are not susceptible to our disease. Give me that health. Ooh, this gun is much better at asteroids. Get out of my way, asteroids! They came across a strange machine. What could this thing be? It's so strange. Why is it lasering me? The wagon fell out of orbit. By chance they landed in the same river they had jumped over the day before. The chances of that are not super good. Offer I came down with mountain fever. They came across a large herd of buffalo. Just a minute. It's all right. We got the disease gun. It's really good at large herds of buffalo. I hope this herd's not quite large enough for a disease. To Disease to spread super virulently, though. Buffalo, 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 buffalo. <laughs> That's exactly the point of this game, Misplay Sanity. Yes! Welcome! <laughs> it's so refreshing to have someone who's never seen this before to play this with. Because it reminds me, like... Like, by now, I take all of this by rote, but I remember completely losing my mind the first time I played this game. The number of buffalo was absurd. And it's nice to have, like, it's nice to remember that feeling. Thank you for being here, Misplaced Sanity. Yes! <laughs> yeah! Oh no, I got the stupid sniper rifle. This thing's the worst. I mean, it aims a little bit for you, but it's not as good as diseases. We're just gonna run it out of bullets. Angry Buffalo charge the wagon! Oh no! Historically accurate wagon adventures. Our fry recovered from mountain fever. Austin Rob Zorm and McFabulous, it's great to have you! Welcome. Glad you're having a good time. The fur trader offered them supplies in exchange for animal hides. We want a med kit. We don't care about your stupid weapons. We're done. All of the recreational buffalo shooting started a prairie fire.
Like my laughing fit when I had that terror mission? Kind of. Yeah, occasionally, occasionally I just break. The buffalo caught fire! Oh no, the fire puts out my disease. That is really bad. We can't use a disease shield anymore. Flamelos! What if you were a buffalo and you were really on fire? That would be really terrible. Our friend noticed a strange smell coming from a nearby camp. She decided to investigate. Oh, this is the event! This is the event where you get the disease pistol. Like, this is how you unlock this ship. Or this, uh, this wagon. Our friend saw an antique pistol sitting near the camp. She picked it up on her way back to the wagon. A noise coming from the tall grass. Disease monkeys! I like that this gun aims for me when we're fighting disease monkeys. Now I don't want it anymore. But we can just run out the ammo. Soon I felt sick. Uh oh. This is. This is really, really awful, though. Awful. There's still disease monkeys? I forgot how hard this event was. Oh, Kurtsune vomited himself inside out! That disease monkey killed our fry. Oh, do you guys remember when we unlocked this wagon? It was really hard. There were all these disease monkeys, and everybody had one HP, and we had to survive. And I'm bad at video games. Well... It has been a pleasure doing Java Llama again. We missed a week. Because I was sick. And... We're a day late. This week because I was sick. But I'm not sick anymore. And this screen is black, not a calendar. Hang on. It's because we crashed my whole computer earlier trying to get the camera to work. I can fix this. Just a second. Um, command prompt. Show the calendar. Show the upcoming stuff for the new people. Yeah. Get your giant egotistical self out of the way. That's too small. I'm more egotistical than that. I'll be over here though. So you can see the D&D is tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, this is the regular schedule. If you're new here, welcome. We are glad to have you. This is what we do all week. Um, we run 9 to 3 Mountain Time every day. Right now it's 3 Mountain Time, so the stream starts 6 hours ago. You can, to make it easy to convert to your current local time zone. Um, the backlog game we've been playing isn't really backlog because it's a new game, but we've been playing lots of more time, and it's been tons of fun. The Skaven are sneaky strong. Uh, we play XCOM's Long War in the afternoons, and we play uh, the, the Java Llama on the weekends. That's this weird day where we have super amazing wagon adventures and, and laugh and drink caffeine and dance and do stuff. Um, this is the last week. No, I need to, I need to do planning for the holidays because there's going to be some shenanigans, but we are in the middle of the 365 day challenge. So there will be some stream every day throughout the holidays, but I don't know exactly when yet. I've got to do some calendaring this month is going to be a little weird, and this stuff is going to get disrupted. Um, but Mondays are for Axis O'Clock, and Wednesdays and Fridays we play Divinity with Lolash, and this week is the Metagaming Podcast, and I won't be sick, and we won't miss that podcast this week, and uh, Lolash's power won't go out. I hope. Should be fine. Um, what is for Axis O'Clock? That Misplay Sanity is uh, the Firaxis Twitch channel, hosts my stream, and Firaxis and 2K tweet out and invite people to come watch. So it's kind of like a Firaxis sponsored stream of one of their games. They do Firaxis o'clock all week in that time slot. 
Um, Monday is me, Tuesday is Beagle Rush, Wednesday is Quill 18, and then Thursday and Friday are the Firaxis team and the 2K team. Um, and yeah, Monday is me. The mechs, we have mechs in the regular campaign. The Firaxis campaign goes once a week and it has not gotten very far yet. Um, Firaxis Games is the game developer that made Civilization and XCOM. XCOM 2 hype for sure, Misplay Sanity. Um, I, because I have this connection with Firaxis, I've been poking them gently about getting me press copies. So hopefully, hopefully we get to do a little bit of preview stuff on the channel here. Once they're ready to let live streamers do some preview stuff. Hopefully. We try to be friendly, this place, Sandy, we do. I, I really honestly believe that the best community on Twitch hangs out in this chat. You guys are awesome. Totally awesome. Poke them in the eye. I try to avoid the eye when I poke them because I don't want them to hate me. <laughs> I really enjoy the relationship I have with them because I get to do cool stuff like stream on their channel. Awkwardly friendly, right? And now is time for me to awkwardly say goodbye. Um, we are don't go anywhere though, because we are going to raid one of my teammates. We're going to raid another archetype today. Draco Griffin will get you all of the details and the links in the chat while I tell you about how you can make sure that I can keep doing this as my full-time job by clicking on the buttons below the broadcast. Um, we got a new Patreon subscriber this week, which is awesome. Um, I would love to get some more. If you follow my Patreon page, you may have noticed that our total dropped way down. It's because they changed the way they display that information. They're displaying... Um, it's, it's more accurate to how much money I actually get from Patreon. It doesn't include people who decline the charges. It doesn't include uh, credit card fees and that sort of thing. So the number came down quite a bit. Um, I have adjusted the milestone goals down to compensate for that. So there's been some updates over there. You should go check it out. Go have a look and see how we're doing. Um, and I'm a Twitch partner, so you can subscribe. And ads that play on the channel also support me. So I appreciate if you add Twitch to your ad block filter so it's allowed to show you ads because that also directly... Uh, supports this stream and keeps me on the air or tubes or whatever we don't really I guess if you use Wi-Fi in your house I'm on the air kind of that phrase doesn't mean what it used to mean the tubes keeps me on the tubes I'm gonna use that now no matter how awkward it sounds um, what way supports me the best PFC grunt all um we have a variety of ways so that you can pick the one that fits you the best um, they're all great for me. Uh, the, um, I mean, I, I get the highest percentage from Patreon, but if you prefer the subscriber rewards, um, subscribing helps Twitch stay Twitch, and I couldn't do this without Twitch. So I, I appreciate subscriptions, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, really, like, we have this big variety, so you can choose what fits you better and which rewards you want the most and they're all they're all the same to me um yeah i mean just like stream tip during java llama is also really really fun helps make the broadcast a lot more fun you know uh, more entertaining for for other people that stuff's good um if you click that amazon link if you look at my wish list before you do christmas shopping on amazon um i get some advertising revenue that way also that's another thing you can do where like it doesn't cost you anything because you're buying stuff you already would have bought and I get some advertising revenue because I'm an Amazon affiliate also. So that's that's one more thing you can do. Cook for me and send me food. I like food. Absolutely. I should be better at populating my wish list with stuff so people can send me gifts because some people would rather like send a thing than a dollar. I should, I should be better at that. Um... 
Yes. Those are the things. How long have I been streaming this place, Sanity? Um, I started last... Not last, but like the June before last June. So like a year and a half, about. Um, I was a teacher when I started, and I switched to full-time last summer. And I've been, I've been streaming full-time for 148 days. Um, I, I made the leap and made this my full-time job about 148 days ago. Um, my own cooking is not healthy enough. If you've seen my cooking show, you know that we do not skimp on flavor. Yeah. We do a cooking show on the channel once a month. It'll probably be next week. This month, because I need to get it out of the way before the holidays start. We are going to make cream puffs this month. Another extraordinarily healthful food, completely full of butter and sugar. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that is right. If you sneakily find out my address and send me a Kinder Surprise Egg, do you get to prison for smuggling in illegal goods? I... I don't know. I... I don't know what the deal is with Kinder Eggs here. I think stores can't sell them, but I think you can probably bring them into the country if you don't sell them. I can't imagine they're, like, contraband illegal. I can't imagine. Um... At any rate, please copy and paste Draco Giffen's raid, raid call. Head over to Aurora Mist's channel. Um, I have it on good authority that today is her birthday. Just like it was the last time we raided her. And she loves it when people remember her birthday. Um, so I'm going to head over to Rue's channel now and get ready for the raid. I'll see you guys all over there. Thanks for hanging out today. Um, why are they not allowed to be sold? And ask you because in America, if you do something stupid and get hurt, it's other people's fault. I shouldn't say stuff like that. I try not to be political. But it's, it's because the toys are unsafe. Which is really, really, really dumb. And I try not to be political, and I shouldn't have said that out loud, because that's not the content I want on this channel. And please don't discuss it in the chat. That's not what we do here. And I apologize for saying that. <laughs> we'll say awkward goodbyes. I just need people to start saying goodbye. Or I need to start paying attention to the chat. This music is really... I can't hear myself think. Because this music is on. I'm going to turn it off so I can hear myself think and say goodbye. All right, get your raid cannons loaded. Get yourselves ready. Aurora Mist. Goodbye, Arnowski. Take a moment to admire my beard. Wait, we can make the beard much more admirable. Um, this one. Mmm. Getting a little bit of a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Just a little bit of texture. Some, just some white, some gray, to show my experience and wisdom. Mmm. You might PFC grunt. Aw, hug. Mmm. Good night, Kalmari. Later, Asawalda. Good night, Steven. Thanks for all your, all your support today. Today was super fun. Appreciate you, Steven. Good night, Flutterdash. Mmm, that distinguished beard. Mmm. Yes. And those distinguished painted fingernails stroking it. I can't bring myself to clean them off. I feel so pretty. My two-year-old made me do this. And now I just, I just feel pretty. And this might be... Maybe I'm secretly a transvestite and I didn't know. But right now, I really feel like I love these fingernails. A true pirate beard. Yar. Good night, red liquids. Aww. Good night. Good night, Nugget. <laughs> See you, Rage Mage. All right, you guys ready for the raid? I'm ready for the raid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Go. It's not emo or goth. It's because I feel pretty. I think the next time I do it, I'll do a brighter color. Because people keep thinking it's like a goth statement, and that's not. It's just because it makes me feel pretty. All right, we're gonna go over to Aurora Mist now, and I'm gonna stop whatever this thing is that I'm doing.
it's her birthday. 